internet, 864. 9.30 p.m., LA Angels take on the Boston Red Sox. Angels on Sirius and XM Channels 89 Internet 852, Red Sox on Internet 843. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Friday, April the 5th. All times are Eastern and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.05 p.m. New York Yankees take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Yankees on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 858. Blue Jays on Internet 868. 1.10 p.m. Detroit Tigers take on the Oakland A's. Tigers on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 849. Athletics on Internet 859. 2.20 p.m. Chicago Cubs take on the LA Dodgers. Cubs on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 844. Dodgers on Internet 853. Spanish broadcast on Internet 870. 4.10 4.10 p.m., Colorado Rockies take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Rockies on Sirius 211, XM 178, and Internet 848. Rays on Internet 866. 4.12 p.m., Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Baltimore Orioles. Pirates on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 861. Orioles on Internet 842. 4.35 p.m., San Francisco Giants take on the San Diego Padres. Giants on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 863. Padres on Internet 862. 6.40 p.m., Cincinnati Reds take on the New York Mets. Reds on Sirius 138, XM 175, and Internet 846. Mets on Internet 857. 6.45 p.m., Washington Nationals take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Nationals on Sirius 208, XM 176, and Internet 869. Phillies on Internet 860. 7.20 p.m., Atlanta Braves take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Braves on Sirius 209, XM 177, and Internet 841. Diamondbacks on Internet 840. 7.40 p.m., Kansas City Royals take on the Chicago Cubs. Royals on Sirius 210, XM 181, and Internet 851. White Sox on Internet 845. 8.05 p.m. Texas Rangers take on the Houston Astros. Rangers on Sirius 85, XM 182, and Internet 867. Astros on Internet 850. Spanish broadcast on Sirius 132, XM 183, and Internet 871. On the court and off, your home for the NBA is Sirius XM. Follow all the drama as your favorite team vies for it all. Sirius XM NBA Radio. Sirius XM 86. MLB Network radio host Xavier Scruggs believes Juan Soto of the New York Yankees is the perfect fit in the Yankee lineup. Fans getting an opportunity to see Soto take at bats. These Yankees fans now that get to watch Soto on a daily basis will appreciate his ability to hone in on exactly what he's looking for. And that's ultimately the difference between him and every other player player in the major leagues is he is so hyper focused on not swinging at a pitch outside of his zone he may give up two strikes in the at bat but he is going to wait for you to make that mistake and he's going to make you pay and he doesn't have to do it by hitting a home run we saw it multiple times this weekend being able to use the whole field yesterday against the game's best closer and josh Hader, just taking that line drive the other way to plate the go-ahead run uh the appreciation for what he's done to already kind of acclimate himself into this lineup and we saw this in spring training too like he was already on his own power stroke getting it going um he's done an amazing job you think about how important that is too with judge not quite getting himself going yet if they had this same situation last year with judge struggling or judge out of the lineup you you didn't know who was going to step up Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 brings you expert analysis from former players, coaches, and executives, plus reaction to all the latest news on the only 24-7 station dedicated to the National Football League. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Friday, April the 5th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.05 p.m., New York Yankees take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Yankees on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 858. Blue Jays on Internet 868. 110 p.m., Detroit Tigers take on the Oakland A's. Tigers on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 849. Athletics on Internet 859. 2.20 p.m., Chicago Cubs take on the LA Dodgers. Cubs on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 844. Dodgers on Internet 853. Spanish broadcast on Internet 870. 4.10 p.m., Colorado Rockies take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Rockies on Sirius 211, XM 178, and Internet 848. Rays on Internet 866. 4.12 p.m., Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Baltimore Orioles. 
Pirates on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 861. Orioles on Internet 842. 4.35 p.m., San Francisco Giants take on the San Diego Padres. Giants on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet Major League Baseball play-by-play is now on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. Why do I love calling this game? Calling this game? Calling this game? Calling this game? Why do I love calling this game? It's because I get a chance to bring some joy into people's lives. Anything can happen on a baseball field. We've got a new game! It's perfectly unscripted theater. Everybody on their feet! Because you never know what you're going to see on a given day. It is Bedlam in the Bank as Bryce Harper has put the Phillies on just something about baseball on the radio. Something about the way wood hits leather. A swing and a drive to deep left center. The way leather hits dirt. And he make a play. Oh, my. The way a deep fly ball sounds like it's about to change history. High fly ball to center field. It's hit pretty well toward the wall. Until the cleats hit the grass, hit the crushed brick, and then nothing but sky in a silent crowd. Until leather hits leather and 40,000 fans lose their collective minds. In a perfect symphony of chaos. He jumped up on top of the wall, balanced himself, and caught it! The way nothing triumphs a perfectly honest call. I don't believe what I just saw. And the way the right voice can make a moment live forever. Touch a ball, Joe! You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life! Outsiders may think this is just two teams. The ball, a bat, and a microphone, but no. For over a hundred years, this has been the soundtrack of the American pastime. He struck it out looking. It's over. It's over. The Rangers have won the World Series. The soundtrack of summer. This is Major League Baseball on the radio. Right now on Sirius XM. All rise. Coming in five. Get ready to play. Four. Get up. Three. Can you believe it? Put your seatbelt on. Wow. My goodness. Major League Baseball play-by-play is now on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern. It's the Cookout 400 from Martinsville Speedway. Check and fly, baby. Yeah. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Oh, yeah. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. March Madness is finally here. The most magical of destinations. For the best analysis. That team is going to be a tough out. And coverage of the ACC teams and the NCAA tournament. Tune into Sirius XM ACC Radio. From the title contenders to the Cinderella teams, we've got you covered through the national championship in Phoenix. Holy smokes, what a play by R.J. Davis. It's all on Sirius XM ACC Radio, Channel 371, and the all-new Sirius XM app. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jim Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XM FC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. The Busted Open Podcast is now available on YouTube. This is Dave LaGreca, host of Busted Open, the number one pro wrestling show on the planet. You can now watch and listen to the award-winning Busted Open Podcast every single day on YouTube. Our best interviews, behind-the-scenes access, and some of our best content from the past. All available right now when you go to YouTube.com slash at Busted Open Podcast. Subscribe right now. Hi, this is Mike Tirico. The 2024 Masters Tournament is coming, and you can hear all the action on Sirius XM. They turned right into the cup for John Rahm. Masters Radio returns Monday, April 8th, with play-by-play coverage from Augusta National Golf Club beginning Thursday, April 11th. Rory 
McElroy, eight under par, 64. He's thinking Grand Slam. Hear the 2024 Masters on Channel 92 when you're in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win whichever fantasy sport you play. Right now on Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Conditions apply. See website for details. This slams a ball to right field. Way back. Way, 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 way gone. Is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Low rounding and heading for second. The throw. In time. On the Sportsnet Radio Network. A baseball metropolis. The Blue Jays are in the Big Apple, more specifically the Bronx, for the first time in 2024, taking on the division-leading Yankees. While New York has sprinted out to a 6-1 and one start, Toronto tries to rebound from an ugly offensive series in Houston. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Ben Schulman, alongside former Major Leaguer Chris LaRue. Sho Ali is today's host and producer, and Tom Young is our technical director. Toronto Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by the local family-owned Crown Rust Control Centers in Mount Pearl and Cornerbrook, Newfoundland. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Find your local family-owned crown at crown.com, Canada's number one rust protection. The Blue Jays bring David Schneider back into the lineup today after his heroic homer on Tuesday, but he and the rest of Toronto have a tough opponent on the mound. Old friend Marcus Stroman toes the rubber for the Yankees, while the Blue Jays counter with Yusei Kikuchi. Game one in the Bronx is next. You're listening to Blue Jays baseball streaming on the Sportsnet app, sportsnet.ca, and across the Sportsnet radio network. Timber Mart is Canada's building center, a solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of air miles, reward miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed-rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza at Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready-to-order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Center. Visit timbermart.ca. The 2024 NFL Draft is fast approaching, and Sirius XM NFL Radio is getting you ready with our series of draft previews. Caleb Williams, is there anything this guy can't do? Get expert insight and analysis from our staff of former players, coaches, and executives. This is a special talent, and he can beat you with his feet. He can beat you with his arm. Sirius XM NFL Radio's 2024 NFL Draft Preview, quarterback edition. Get it anytime on the all-new Sirius XM app. Jays fans, this is George Springer, and you're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on Sirius XM. George Springer, airborne, snatches it out of the sky. Network. Marcus Stroman warming up in the Yankee bullpen as New York and Toronto are just a couple minutes away from opening up this three-game set at Yankee Stadium. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left is Chris LaRue. Chris, the Blue Jays will turn to Yusei Kikuchi today, a left-hander who's been very good in his career against the Yankees. However, his first start of the season, he went four and a third, gave up three runs, walked three. What do you need to see from Stroman today that you think will help him improve upon that last start? Well, I think the biggest thing is fastball command for Yusei Kikuchi. You look at his stuff, and I've talked about this a lot with Yusei Kikuchi. His stuff is incredible. He has the third hardest fastball for any left-handed starting pitcher in all of Major League Baseball. But he doesn't throw enough strikes with it. I don't think he trusts it enough. You see 
a lot of the time he'll revert back to throwing his slider, throwing that curveball sometimes, and he's been working on the, the, the changeup. He needs to get ahead of these, especially this potent New York Yankees lineup, Juan Soto, Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, guys that can do damage on a fastball. If you fall behind 2-0 and and you have to come in with a 95-mile-an-hour fastball right down the middle, this Yankee lineup will do damage. So I need to see Yusei Kikuchi get ahead and stay ahead with his fastball. We will have to wait just a couple more minutes to see what happens with Kikuchi's second start of the season. Before we get there, let's go to baseball control with today's host, Sho Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. Welcome back inside baseball control here in our downtown Toronto studios. Before we check out the standings update, courtesy of Bet365, I had a chance yesterday to catch up with Emmanuel Burbari from WFAN, does postgame, and we'll be doing some play-by-play -play for them. He joined me yesterday to chat a little bit about the 2024 New York Yankees. This group has a different feel to it right now. It seems like there's a lot of chemistry and a lot of different personalities the Yankees assembled in that clubhouse this offseason, and that was by design, all seem to be gelling to start the year. So I think that's a big part of it. There's more balance to this team than a season ago. You didn't have a whole lot of uh, competent left-hand hitting uh, for the Yankees. Now you do, whether it be Soto, obviously, or Verdugo, which was an underrated pickup in the offseason from the Red Sox. And then Grisham hasn't factored in all that much yet. You've seen him a couple of games. You know that he can give you the gold glove defense out in center field. But I think he's going to have a major role on this team. So a lot of lefty stump compared to recent years for the Yankees. Balance in the lineup, a lot of chemistry in that clubhouse, a lot of, uh, they call it vibes and, and swagger. I, I think you're seeing that with the Yankees right now. And then doing just enough in the starting rotation and the bullpen, that's sort of been the bread and butter for the Yankees in recent years. Whoever it is, the revolving door of arms in the bullpen, getting the job done. So the Yankees are clicking and they're going to score a lot of runs this year. I think that's going to be the difference. It's just a matter of what they get out of that starting rotation, and the bullpen continues to be a major bright spot. That is Emmanuel Barbari from WFAN joining me yesterday. I'll get that chat up on sportsnet.ca. It was a fun one that also involved a little back and forth about the uh, pinstriped future of Juan Soto. Uh, before we get to first pitch, let's check out today's starting lineups. Here's John Schneider's lineup. George Springer's in right field. He is batting leadoff as usual. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. batting second. He is at first base. Bo Bichette batting third. He is at shortstop. Justin Turner is cleaning up, DHing today. Davis Schneider in left field. He is batting fifth. Kevin Biggio is batting sixth at second base. Alejandro Kirk is batting seventh. He is catching. Dalton Varsho is in center field. He is batting eighth. Isaiah Kiner Falefa is batting ninth. He is at third base. No. Kevin Kiermeyer, he was in the original lineup, but he was scratched uh, maybe about an hour ago, maybe a little less than an hour ago, actually, with left lower back tightness. So no Kiermeyer today. He did run out on the onto the field for uh, the opening day festivities with the rest of the team, but he is not in the starting lineup. Glaber Torres for the Yankees, bats leadoff. He is at second base. Juan Soto in right field, batting second. Aaron Judge in center field, batting third. Giancarlo Stanton is DHing today. He is batting fourth. Anthony Rizzo batting fifth at first base. Anthony Vol. P is at short, batting sixth. Verdugo, Birdie, and Trevino in left, batting uh, third base and catching today, batting 7-8-9. Marcus Stroman, of course, is going to start. Before we get started, let's check out the Bet365 standings update. Download the Bet365 app for today's baseball odds. Find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. 19-plus play responsibly, Ontario only. In the AL East, the Yankees do lead the division. They are 6-1. The Red Sox are 5-2. and two. The Orioles are 4-2. and two. They've played one less game, and both the Blue Jays and the Rays are three and four. And of course, before we get you over to Ben and Chris, we do have Jay's talk today. Blair and Barker have the post game show. They will be on TV and radio. They'll take your calls via the back leg line. The number to call 416-413-3959. Leave them a message or you can send them a text today. 590-590. Name and location. All right. Marcus Stroman's on the mound. Here's the game. Ben Shulman and Chris LaRue with the call. Thank you very much, Show The right-hander getting his warm-up pitches in right now as the Blue Jays get set for the top of the first inning. The first inning is brought to you by Armstrong Bird Food. Bring nature to your backyard with Armstrong. Feeding Blue Jays since 1986. Visit armstrongbirdfood.com. Stroman, 32 years old, now on his fourth major league team, signing with the Yankees in the offseason. And he's a guy who, for his entire career, Blue Jays fans saw this a lot, will force a lot of ground balls, Chris, with that sinker. Yeah, he's one of the last remaining true sinker ballers in the big leagues. We've seen a, 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 the rise of that, the high spin rate fastball, a lot like the Blue Jays saw in, the, in their last game against Houston with Christian Javier. 
you have that high spin rate. It's almost the invisible. Marcus Stroman throws a sinker. I love seeing guys that throw sinkers because it's kind of a lost art. You don't really see it that much anymore. But Marcus Stroman, this is a home opener for the New York Yankees. He's a guy that grew up just 54 miles from Yankee Stadium. This has to be a dream come true for him. Native of Medford, New York on Long Island. Stroman talking to the defense behind him, which will feature Jose Trevino behind the plate, Anthony Rizzo at first, Glaber Torres at second with Anthony Volpe at short, John Birdie plays third, Alex Verdugo, Aaron Judge, and Juan Soto left to right in the outfield. The bleacher creatures out in right field, loud clapping on their feet, doing roll call with the Yankees right now as Stroman steps back and delivers to George Springer, who swings and lines the ball to right field, past Soto and rolling toward the corner. He fumbles with it, loses it on the track, but Springer will just have to stop at second. I say just with a stand-up double to start the game. Yeah, it looked like Juan Soto kind of looked up, looked up at George Springer and lost sight of that ball, and it trickled by him. But that's a good sign for Toronto. George Springer leading off with that hard double down the line. Time of the first pitch, 110 Eastern, 8 degrees in New York, lots of sleeves out right now. Here's Guerrero, and the first pitch he sees is grounded to first. Rizzo flips it back to Stroman, who steps on the bag. That will move Springer up to third base with one out. And that was a hard, hard sinker in on the hands of Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Just take that as a sack bunt, moving George Springer over to third base. You hear the chanting, the bleacher creatures, <laughs> they want everyone to roll call, acknowledge them. They're just chanting Verdugo for Alex Verdugo. Infield in for the Yankees, runner on third, one down. Here's Bo Bichette. The pitch. Outside, ball one. Bo Bichette, usually a free swinger early on in counts. He was the first Blue Jay to not swing at the first pitch so far <laughs> in this game, though. No score, top of the first. Runner on third. Bichette trying to hit a fly ball at least to drive him in. The 1-0. Foul back. One ball, one strike. We've talked about the Stroman sinker. He also throws a slurve. Throws a cutter that he used a lot in his last start. His first start as a Yankee threw it 37 times. Has a four-seamer. Threw a splitter and slider a little bit as well last year. The 1-1. Outside, that was the cutter. Two balls and one strike. Bichette wearing long blue sleeves to protect from the cold today under his blue jersey. The 2-1. Poked foul. Reached out of the zone away to make it 2-2. Two and two. Jose Trevino, the catcher, liked that pitch. He was nodding his head to Stroman after Bichette fouled it off. Yeah, that was a good pitch. You can tell they're being careful with Bo Bichette. I'm sure they would rather face Justin Turner, although Justin Turner is the lone bright spot for this Blue Jays lineup so far this season. The 2-2. Two -two. Bichette fouls it off again. That time a sinker on the inside edge. 89 miles per hour. You're not going to see a lot of juice from Marcus Stroman. But that thing is moving all over the place right now. It started right down the middle and sunk in on Bo Bichette's hands. He had a tough time. Bo can usually inside out those pitches, but that ball sunk all over the place. 2-2 Two -two sinker cut on and missed strike three. Big strikeout there for Stroman. Bichette staring out to center field as he walks back to the dugout. There are two down. Yeah, you don't really see sinkers at 90 miles an hour inside anymore. A lot of a lot of pitchers that throw sinkers at 90 are afraid to come in. And Marcus Stroman, we all know, is not afraid to come inside. Five foot eight starter steps off the rubber for a moment. Gonna dig out some dirt there. Justin Turner to the plate. And here's. Turner now leaning back slightly twitching that back right knee the pitch called strike one George Springer on third no score two outs top of the first Emil Jimenez calls balls and strikes with Lance Barksdale at first Angel Hernandez on second Nick Lentz at third Stroman from the stretch Turner grounds it foul up the left field line a near miss at extra bases there for Justin Turner, who's doubled four times this year. It's 0-2. Yeah, that sinker was supposed to be on the outside part of the plate, but it kind of ran back over the middle. Turner got the barrel on it, but just hit it down the line. Yankees fans on their feet. Stroman 
Puts his glove up to his ear and now will step off. He's going to adjust the pitch gum, takes off his hat. And he's holding the pitch gum up to his ear, trying to test right now if it's even working. Gives a nod like it is, puts it back into his cap, and puts that Yankee cap back on his head. Trevino going to his right thigh to make the call. George Springer 90 feet away from the plate, standing on third after a leadoff double. 0-2 count, two outs. Turner looking out with his sunglasses protecting his eyes. Here's the pitch. Spoiled foul. And this is when Justin Turner is in his element, wearing those shades. He loves wearing those shades during day games. A 1-10 start in the Yankees' home opener. The 0-2. Outside, way outside, despite the Yankees fans' cheers. It's one ball and two strikes. Yeah, those Yankees fans are extra loud early on in this home opener. Bleacher creatures were, couldn't even think they were so loud. No. <laughs> A lot of excitement around the Yankees who have started the year 6-1. and 1-2. One. One, outside again. Two balls and two strikes. That ball wasn't even close to being a strike. No, neither. <laughs> Davis Schneider on deck for the Blue Jays should the inning continue. Stroman kicks and delivers. Turner with a looper down the right field line, slicing into the seats. It's back about seven rows. And Turner is starting to create a bit of a battle here with Marcus Stroman. Well, Stroman's clearly trying to hit that outside part of the plate. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back with a sinker inside here to Justin Turner. Only 14 pitches so far for Stroman in this first, but six pitches in this at-bat against Turner. Started 0-2, has worked the count back to two balls and two strikes, the pitch. Way outside again, full count. George Springer remains at third, leading off just in foul territory. Justin Turner trying to drive in another run as he has for the Blue Jays so often early this year. 3-2. Turner with a liner. Caught at short by Volpe. Well struck, but Volpe reaches up to take a hit away from Turner, and the leadoff double is stranded by the Blue Jays. Scoreless ball game, middle of the first. You say Kikuchi is next. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The Blue Jays are inviting you to work from dome. Put it in your calendar. 307 weekday starts this season. You can work from dome with friends or coworkers at Rogers Center. It's a game changer. Make the ballpark your office for the afternoon. Work from dome. 307 weekday starts. Let's touch base. Check out ticket options on bluejays.com slash work from dome. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to Fixed Rate Pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Go to pizzapizza.ca. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. Hey, this is Eric Swanson. You're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Big time and in a small town. You say Kikuchi wiping some sweat off his face with his left arm, then his right. He's ready to go for his second start of the season. Scoreless ball game, Blue Jays and Yankees. Kikuchi waiting as Glaber Torres digs out some dirt in the right-handed batter's box and now steps in. Kikuchi, the left-hander, tucks the ball into his glove. Belt high, now kicks and delivers, and a breaking ball is grounded to third. Backhanded by Isaiah Kiner-Falefa, who will throw over to first. One out. And the, 
And there's the rare first pitch of the game <laughs> slider off speed pitch. Kikuchi went away from his slider and curveball a bit more than usual in his last game. We'll see if that changes today. Welcome to the Timberbar broadcast booth, by the way. I'm Ben Schulman. He's Chris LaRue. Kikuchi works with Alejandro Kirk, who started all but one game for the Blue Jays behind the plate this season. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. at first, Kevin Biggio at second. Bo Bichette plays short, IKF at third, Schneider Varsho Springer in the outfield left to right. And here comes Juan Soto, one of the most dangerous hitters in all of Major League Baseball. Soto bats from the left side. The first pitch, fastball at the knees, strike one. Soto hit 35 homers and drove in 109 with San Diego last year. And for the first four-ish games of the season was as hot as anyone in baseball. Next pitch is bounced, one and one. Still remains at a 345 average right now and a huge catalyst of the Yankees' six and one start. The one one. Soto grounds the ball to second, sliding stop on the backhand side. Biggio gets up, throws to first, dug out by Guerrero. Two down on a nice defensive play on both ends of the 4 3 put out. And that's the way Kikuchi needs to attack these big hitters in this Yankees lineup. Fastball down and away, strike one, and then you can start throwing the slider, the curveball, and that's exactly how he attacks Soto. You have to get ahead with the fastball, and then you can go to work. Base is empty, two outs, bottom of the first. Here's Aaron Judge. The pitch. Low ball one. Well, it's not much of an easier matchup after Juan Soto, the 2022 MVP. All-time leader in a single-season home runs in the American League with 62 that year. The 1-0. Called strike one. Backdoor curve against the towering Aaron Judge. Judge bats from the right side. The lefty Kikuchi. Looking in. Kicks, delivers, and misses low. Two and one. Judge is listed at a whopping six foot seven, 282 pounds. And it's pretty much all muscle. Here's the two one. Judge lays off a curveball low, three balls and one strike. And I told you this in spring training, but before you retire from broadcasting, you have to stand next to Judge and Stanton at the exact same time. That'll really make you feel it just, small. <laughs> I kind of just missed it in spring. I got Judge and Soto at one point, Stanton, Stanton and Soto, but. Not both. The 3-1 fastball in there for Kikuchi, who's worked to full count. For what it's worth, the powerful hitter Aaron Judge just hit his first home run on Wednesday, the last game the Yankees played. He's batting only 179 to start the year. The 3-2. Fouled off. Kind of like last series, though, with Jordan Alvarez having a tough start to the year when the Blue Jays went to Houston. It's a dangerous proposition to doubt Aaron Judge based on just a few games. Judge hit 37 homers in only 106 games last year. The 3-2. Low ball four. Missed low with the slider. Judge walks, and that will continue the inning for the equally imposing Giancarlo Stanton. Yeah, that wasn't bad. a bad sequence there. They were clearly pounding Aaron Judge in with fastballs and sliders, and he just missed on that 3-2 slider down in the zone. Pretty good there. I like the way he looked during that at-bat. So a two-out walk gives Giancarlo Stanton an opportunity. A rare guy in a closed stance. Left foot closer to the plate than his right foot. The pitch. Inside, ball one. Stanton, six foot six, 245 pounds. The guy who's hit 59 homers in a season. That was when he won National League MVP in 2017 with the Marlins. The 1-0. Curveball lands in, strike one. He also happened to be a teammate of yours, Chris, both uh, with the Jacksonville Suns double-A team in 2009 and with the Florida Marlins in 2010. The 1-1. Inside, 2-1. and one. He was my guy for a while, going out to dinners and hanging out, and we lived in the same apartment complex in Jacksonville and same uh, apartment complex in Fort Lauderdale when we were with the Marlins. Of course, when I got DFA'd, he was driving me to the field. The 2-1. 
called strike two and two. I'll never forget that day. I've told that story a million times. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it a bit in spring. You're down on, on, you know, your options with the team. He says, no, you'll be fine <laughs> two minutes later. You were right as Stanton fouls off the breaking ball to make it two and two. Well, his reasoning was, it's September. Nobody gets DFA'd in September. <laughs> Which is not a rule that GMs observe. I don't think, I don't think uh, Stanton's ever going to be a GM, that's for sure. John Carlo in the midst of his 13-year, $325 million deal with the Yankees. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Chase the elevated fastball. Kikuchi strikes out Stanton and strands the judge walk. Scoreless headed to the second. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The Rock returns to the ring for WrestleMania 40, and Sirius XM's Busted Open is there to preview it all. Dave LaGreca, Tommy Dreamer, and our Hall of Famers Bully Ray and Mark Henry are in Philadelphia, breaking down all the angles. I'm acknowledging Roman Reigns. That is our tribal chief. I am acknowledging this historic day, as you should too, Dave. It's Busted Open, mornings at 9 Eastern on Sirius XM Fight Nation. Channel 156 on your radio, or listen anytime on the all-new Sirius XM app. The Women's NCAA Tournament is on Sirius XM. It is going to be fun. It is going to be interesting. For the best guests. Don Staley. I just want us to be who we've been. And coverage of March Madness. Tune in to Sirius XM SEC Radio. From the biggest stars. Reese put back is good. Nobody wants any part. No part of it. Of Angel Reese right now. To the top teams. We've got you covered through the national championship in Cleveland. It's all on Sirius XM SEC Radio. Channel 374. And the all-new Sirius XM app. You love listening to baseball. You love talking about baseball, and so do we. That's why Sirius XM has the only channel on the radio dedicated to baseball 24-7. It's MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89. News, opinions, passionate baseball talk from former players and GMs, plus interviews with players, managers, and executives, original specials, and much, much, much more. All baseball, every day, on your radio. If you can hear me right now, you've got MLB Network Radio. Sirius XM Channel 89, and on the Sirius XM app. The Blue Jays are in flight, leading 3-0. Blue Jays fans, this is Ross Atkins, and you're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on Sirius XM. Work. Davis Schneider leads off for the Blue Jays in the top of the second inning at Yankee Stadium. Kevin Biggio and Alejandro Kirk to follow him against right-hander Marcus Stroman. Schneider in the box, resting the bat on his right shoulder, popping it off ever so slightly. Here's the pitch. It's down and away, 1-0. I'm Ben Schulman. He's Chris LaRue. Blue Jays had a leadoff double in the first. Got him to third with one out, but could not knock George Springer in. The 1-0. Way down and away. 2-0. Schneider with two home runs in two starts this season. Has appeared in four games. This is his third start and first time he's starting against a right-handed pitcher. Stroman hesitates, kicks, delivers. And paints it in there for strike one. And I actually like this matchup a lot. Davis Schneider clearly can't hit the elevated fastball. And Marcus Stroman loves to live at the bottom of the zone with his sinker. Good matchup for Schneider. 2-1. Schneider hits a fly ball to right center field. Judge on the run. So is Soto. They converge and Judge makes the catch just in front of the track. One out. The second inning is presented by Bet365. At Bet365, you can bet live, in-game, on game props, totals, and the money line. Download the app and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. 19-plus, play responsibly, Ontario only. With the bases empty, Kevin Biggio, left-handed hitter, steps in. Not originally starting today. The pitch. Low ball one. Biggio was supposed to be out of the lineup, but Kevin Kiermeyer was removed late with lower back tightness. That moved Varsho from left to center, Schneider from second to left, and Biggio from the bench to second. The 1-0. Outside, 2-0. I don't know if you saw this before the game, but Marcus Stroman was warming up in the outfield, just like every other starter in baseball. But his jersey was untucked, almost down to yeah. his knees, and he was wearing hot pink cleats. 2-0 is grounded off the glove of Stroman up the middle. Volpe comes to the second base side and makes the throw over to first. Two down. Well, the, the jersey out of the pants is a thingy that you know, Blue Jays fans <laughs> would even be familiar with. And Stroman 
is often a man of style. He started his uh, HDMH apparel back when he was in Toronto, a 2012 first round pick of the Blue Jays who debuted in 14. He's got a light blue glove right now. He kicks and delivers to Alejandro Kirk. Called strike, 0 and 1. And his sinker is moving all over the place. That actually started off the plate, glove side, and ran all the way back in her third. The 0 1. Kirk with a line shot to right. Soto going back at the track, turns around, it banks off the wall. Kirk around first. He'll have to stop there. Soto played the carom well, but it's a long single for Alejandro Kirk, who really needed that one, hitting a 0.95 before that base hit. Yeah, that was about 10 feet from going out, hitting the base of that wall in right field. Too bad for Alejandro. Kind of bounced off that wall perfectly to Soto, and he just tosses it into second, holding Kirk to a, to a single. And maybe hit 40% of the way up that wall. I mean, it was real close to getting out. Now Dalton Varsho tries to follow up the two-out single, the pitch. Down and in, ball one. No score, top of the second, two outs and Kirk on first. The 1-0. Called strike. marshall has got it. I think like some sort of like Bella Clava, but he's pulled it down <laughs> so it's just around his neck. One-one pitch. Sliced foul, one and two. Yeah, he's got the Bryce Harper headgear, but it's not over his head. It's just around his neck. Just around his neck. Maybe he goes over his head while he's fielding. Could obstruct his view of the plate. Marshall, the lone Blue Jay with a hit in the Blue Jays' last game. On Wednesday, he doubled down the left field line. One ball, two strike count. Rizzo not holding on Kirk. The pitch. Bounced. Two balls, two strikes. I rewatched every single one of his at-bats from the Houston series, and he's swinging at the pitch that he said he wouldn't swing at. That fastball up and in, that cutter up and in, he is swinging at that. He needs to lay off that pitch. Batting 143 to start the year after a 286 spring. 2-2, Two -two, they set up inside, and he takes a pitch for called strike three. Beautiful sinker by Stroman, freezes Varsho to strand Kirk at first. No score, middle of the second. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. We're two men and a truck. And we've got lots of men and lots of trucks. Whether you're planning a move to a new home or to a new office down the hall, big or small, we move them all. We even sell packing and moving supplies. But no matter what you need, we'll do it with a smile. With a 96% referral rating and the professionalism you can trust, the choice is simple. So when you're planning your next move, call Two Men and a Truck. Two Men and a Truck, the movers who care. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. At our core, who are we? The sum of our parts? Nah, we're more than that. There's nobody like us. At our core, we are built to win. Relentless in our pursuit of greatness. Who are we? Blue Jays to the core. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Flatty with a huge stretch for the double play. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Bottom of the second inning in the Bronx. Zeros on the scoreboard. Yusei Kikuchi back out on the mound. On a toque and jacket day in New York, eight degrees Celsius was the temperature at first pitch. Kikuchi facing left-handed hitter Anthony Rizzo. First offering is foul tipped into the glove, strike one. And again, Kikuchi doing a good job, at least early on, of throwing that fastball for strikes. Is it a one? 
just inside one ball one strike. Rizzo bats from the left side open and leaning back twirls his bat up toward the sky the one one breaking ball popped up foul into the seats behind the plate one and two. Rizzo's coming off a weird year hit 244 706 on base plus slugging 12 homers 41 batted in in 99 games. He had a collision early in the season on a pickoff play with Fernando Tatis Jr. Had a brutal 50 games after that. And then they said he has post concussion syndrome and went to the 60 day IL. Missed the rest of the season after August. The 1 2. Bounced. Two balls, two strikes. It was a very un Anthony Rizzo like season for one of baseball's most consistent hitters over the last decade. Three time All Star, four time Gold Glover. Even count against Rizzo. The 2 2. Fouled back. They have just busted him inside again and again. That was a high and tight fastball. Yeah, they don't want to get a, want him to get his hands extended. He's very good at getting that extension and then hitting home runs to that short porch in right field. I go slider away here. The pitch. Breaking ball cut on and missed. Strike three. Rizzo strikes out. And Kikuchi has the first out here in the bottom of the second. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. That was the curve from Kikuchi that Rizzo swung over top of. And just watching Kikuchi, he just seems more confident. Even after throwing that pitch, he, the, the way he was walking around the mound, kind of hitting his, his bare hand into his glove, everything about him looks different today. First offering to Anthony Volpe is spiked 1 0. One out in the base is empty, no score, bottom of the second. Maybe that is because Kikuchi has been really dominant in his career, both against the Yankees and at Yankee Stadium. 1 0 to Volpe. High 2 0. Kikuchi at Yankee Stadium is 3 1 in six starts with an ERA below 2. Even if you remember back to the 2022 season in which he struggled, he was good in early starts of the season at Yankee Stadium, and now he drops a slider in the strike zone to make the count two and one. Just seems to be a comfortable spot for him for whatever reason. Gucci facing right-handed hitter Anthony Volpe. The 2-1 is hit hard on the ground through the hole on the right side and into center field. Picked up in right center by Dalton Varsho. Volpe back to the bag with the first Yankee hit today. Yeah, and Volpe taking advantage of that big hole. Kevin Biggio was playing almost at second base behind it, just, just to the right. And Volpe, who grew up just down the street from Yankee Stadium, about 40 miles from Yankee Stadium. Man, that must be a dream. Oh, yeah. Had, <laughs> had a nice rookie year with the Yankees last year. Hit 20 homers, stole 20 bases. The contact skills were the thing that they were looking to improve. He's hitting over 400 to start the year. Here's Red Sox and Dodger, now Yankee, Alex Verdugo. First pitch to him inside, 1-0. Was dealt in a rare Red Sox to Yankee trade this offseason. And is a much different looking guy now that he's got none of the facial hair that he had in Boston. Clean shaven with eye black. Yeah, you almost don't recognize him. A 1-0. Called strike. Verdugo hit 264 last year for the Sox. Mid 700s on base plus slugging with 13 homers and 54 driven in. Kuchi kicks up his knee and tosses it over to first. Volpe is back. Volpe is definitely a threat to run. His 24 stolen bases were the most by any Yankee since 2014. When another Red Sox turned Yankee, Jacoby Ellsbury stole 39. The 1 1. Runner goes, pitches a ball, throw down to second. Got him! Alejandro Kirk delivers a strike. Good pick by Bo Bichette. And the Blue Jays gunned down Volpe for the second out. Yeah, and that was probably the best throw of the season from Kirk, but what a pick from Bo Bichette, able to pick that ball and then tag Volpe at the same time. What a play. Looking at the replay, that's not a play that you'll even look at to challenge. They clearly got him. Bo tagged Volpe on the left elbow. 
kind of took the pick into the path of Volpe. And that's the third runner Kirk has caught stealing this year. Now the pitch to Verdugo called strike two. And it's a 2-2 count now with two outs and nobody on. Verdugo chokes up slightly on the bat. The 2-2. Jammed him. Q shot to third. Kiner Falefa charges. Throws to first. Not in time. Pulled Guerrero off the bag, although I don't think he had the time to get it over anyway. As Kiner Falefa was playing the other way and had to race back to third to pick up the ground ball. Yeah, Kiner Falefa was playing on the pull side of Verdugo. Not really close to third base. He had to come all the way back close to third base to get that little Q shot. Didn't really have a chance at first base. It's a base hit for Alex Verdugo and a two out base runner here for the Yankees. That brings John Birdie to the plate, right handed hitter who stands very straight up. Kikuchi peaks at first, delivers home. It's called strike one. John Birdie, who I played with in Buffalo. Yeah, a former Blue Jay draft pick. He was, he was back and forth from New Hampshire to Buffalo, was kind of an afterthought when I played with him. And look at him now. Trash blowing across the field, the 0-1. <laughs> Down and in, one ball, one strike. Yeah, Birdie was a guy who the Blue Jays picked in 2011, and that was out of college. So you would have thought, okay, you know, 2013, 2014, maybe that's around the time you get him up to the major leagues. The 1-1. Downstairs, two balls, one strike. Instead, the Blue Jays traded him at one point to Cleveland, during the 2017 or 2018 season, Cleveland traded him back to Toronto, and then he debuted with the Blue Jays for four games that year. 2-1 slider is outside, three balls, one strike. But really his major league career prospered in Miami. Signed as a free agent with the Marlins ahead of the 2019 season and played with them all the way up until last year, which was a career year for him. Runner on first, two down, no score. Kikuchi will step off the rubber. In 2023, Birdie played a career-high 133 games, added 294, which was a career best, hit seven home runs, another career high, and had the best total in RBIs of his career at 33. Kikuchi with a 3-1, drops in the curve, and it's three balls and two strikes. Yeah, he's always been just an organizational guy, and an orga organizational guy just means you fill little holes here and there in double-A and high-A, and you basically don't have a chance at getting to the big leagues. Now in his seventh season, the 3-2. Swing and a miss. Kikuchi powers the fastball by him for his second strike out of the inning and strands for Dugo on first. No runs, two hits, one left for the Yankees. Scoreless game as we head to the third. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to Fixed Rate Pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizzapizza.ca at Bet365, we don't do ordinary. That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. Hey, this is Trevor Richards. You're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. 
Former Yankee Isaiah Kiner Falefa leads off for the Blue Jays. Top of the third inning about to start as Jose Trevino throws down to first. Kiner Falefa stretching out his arms before he steps into the righty batter's box. Scoreless ball game, Blue Jays and Yankees here in the third. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left is Chris LaRue. Marcus Stroman on the rubber. Steps back, waits, and fires. Missed high, ball one. Kiner Falefa spending the last two seasons with the Yankees after being traded over from Minnesota. Here's the 1-0. Fouled off, 1-1. One one. Didn't play with Minnesota, though. Was traded in one offseason from Texas to Minnesota to the Yankees. Came over with Josh Donaldson and Ben Rortvet in a deal that sent Gio Urshela and Gary Sanchez to the Twins. The 1-1. Kiner Falefa fouls it off, 1-2. Played 255 games with New York. A lot at shortstop, but all around the diamond in the last two years. One-two pitch. Down and away. Two balls and two strikes. Seems like the Yankees replaced Kiner Falefa with the exact same player in John Birdie. Similar player. Similar. They also have Oswaldo Cabrera, who came up in their system. Oswald Peraza, who's injured right now. The 2 2. Kiner Falefa hits a fly ball to right. Soto on the run toward the corner. Looking up. That ball lands foul. Probably about 10 feet from the wall and 5 feet from being fair. <laughs> yeah, there's a. The wall there is about 5 feet from the foul line. Yeah. I feel like a lot of outfielders should be hurt right there crashing into it, but Juan Soto reluctantly kind of just saunters after it. Kiner Falefa teasing that short wall in right field. Here's the 2-2 pitch again. Down and away, ball three. And this is what Kiner Falefa will give you. He won't give you a ton of power, but he'll give you good at-bats. He'll give you good contact. Work his way on base. Hitting 250 to start the year. Payoff pitch. Called strike three. Late call there from Emil Jimenez. And there's one down. The third inning is brought to you by the local family-owned Crown Rust Control Centers in Mount Pearl and Corner Brook, Newfoundland. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Find your local family-owned Crown at crown.com, Canada's number one rust protection. With one out, the lineup flips over for the first time today, and George Springer bats for the Blue Jays, one for one with a double. First pitch is outside, ball one. Springer banked a ball off the wall and right on the first pitch he saw in the first. 1-0 is down and away, 2-0. That had to be nice for Springer, who did have three walks but was hitless back at his old stomping grounds in Houston in the series earlier in the week. 2-0 pitch. Check swing, called strike. 2-1. Well, we really haven't seen him go the opposite way with any kind of authority. Those two home runs that he has were both on the pull side in Tampa. But it must feel good, like you said, to, to kind of drive the ball the other way. Springer with a line shot foul just beyond the dugout down the first base line. It's two balls, two strikes. Not a lot of sunlight in New York. A cold day, flags blowing. Got flags all around the ballpark. The 2-2 two -two inside, full count. Springer's going to ask for time. Adjust his batting gloves right now. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. getting set to go as he's the hitter on deck. And you can see just how uncomfortable these Blue Jays hitters are with that sinker in. You rarely see a good hard sinker inside. Payoff from Stroman. Springer with a fly ball, shallow right. Soto makes the call and squeezes it with two hands over top of his head. There are two outs. Beautiful Hawks dream field in Nova Scotia overlooking the Atlantic Ocean was made possible through Jace Care's Field of Dreams program. All 50-50 proceeds support kids in Jace Care programs. Head to bluejays.com slash 50-50 to get your tickets from anywhere in Ontario or Nova Scotia. Two outs. Base is empty. First pitch to Guerrero. Inside ball one. 
There's another sinker inside. It's only 90 miles an hour, but that thing is moving all over the place. Ladio for one. Hit a ground ball to first last time up. Next pitch he sees is pounded in the ground to third. Charging in, birdie whips it over to first, retires Guerrero to finish off the top of the third. First one, two, three frame for Marcus Stroman, and in the middle of the third inning, we're still looking for our first run. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The best amateur players in women's golf will compete in the Augusta National Women's Amateur. Rose Zhang is your Augusta National Women's Amateur Champion. Sirius XM is your exclusive home for this premier event in the world of golf. Coming into the event, I knew that this wasn't going to be an easy fight. Hear the Augusta National Women's Amateur tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern on PGA Tour Radio Channel 92 and NBC Sports Audio Channel 85. And then on Monday, Masters Radio returns on Channel 92 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win whichever fantasy sport you play. Right now on Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there too. This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24-7 as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus, you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM Channel 89. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. Radio Network. Bottom of the third inning in the Bronx, it's nothing, nothing, Blue Jays and Yankees. Yusei Kikuchi takes on Jose Trevino. The first pitch. Down low, ball one. Trevino, the ninth hitter in the Yankee order. Batting just 111 to start the year, a defense first catcher for the Yankees. 1 0 pitch. Call and strike. And that just kind of shows you how inconsistent Yusei Kikuchi is with his fastball. That first fastball bounced almost on the plate. You rarely see that from a big leaguer. You don't see fastballs bounce like that. Called strike at the top of the zone with the heater to make it one and two. And then he just absolutely dots his next two fastballs. <laughs> That's an unhittable pitch. I mean, that barely got the zone right at the upper and inner corner. One, two to the right-handed hitter Trevino. They go inside a little too far to make it two balls and two strikes. Glaber Torres, Juan Soto also do up this inning. Two, two. Low ball three. Kikuchi's been effective so far, but he has thrown a fair share of pitches. Nobody out here in the bottom of the third. And he's about to throw his 44th of the day. The lefty kicks and delivers. Swing and a miss. Trevino chased a breaking ball that was probably ball four, and that's a strikeout for out number one. Welcome to the Timbermart broadcast booth. Timbermart always has someone on deck to help you with any home improvement projects. Before you begin renovating, visit the team at Timbermart. They've got the know-how to make sure you come out swinging on your next project. Timbermart, Canada's building center. Glaber, Glaber Torres up. With the bases empty, first pitch curveball in there, strike one. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Scoreless game with the bases empty in the bottom of the third. Torres 0 for 1 with a ground out to third base. The pitch. Bounce to the plate, 1 and 1. And I love how Kikuchi attacked Trevino. He's the number nine hitter in the lineup. He just went at him with fastballs. He's only hitting 111. So you don't want to mess around. You don't want to fall behind, although he did fall behind. <laughs> you don't want to try to fall behind with some off-speed pitches, and he attacked him, and then he just flipped that 3-2 curveball in there and struck him out. 1-1 one, one is low, two balls and one strike. 
has to take a different plan of attack against Glaber Torres, who's hit over 400 against Kikuchi in his career. The 2 1. Breaking ball dots the outside corner, 2 and 2. Sun coming out now in New York a little bit. Finally see some shadows behind the hitter and the umpire. Still a cold day, but maybe just a little bit warmer with the clouds parting. Kikuchi is set. His 2-2. Line shot foul into the seats on the right side. Still two balls, two strikes. Yeah, they were trying to go up and in with a fastball there. And you can see Alejandro Kirk after Kikuchi missed his spot. Say, come on, man, let's go. And they're probably going to go try to go back in there again. Fiftieth pitch of the day for Kikuchi. A fastball over the heart of the plate. Fouled back. Kirk with kind of some violent nods here. Is punching into his glove. Trying to fire up Kikuchi here. To rein in his command. Yeah, they're trying to go back up and in again with that fastball. Kikuchi leaves it middle, middle. Good thing Glaber just missed that thing. 2-2 two, two again. Slider hit hard to third through the hole. Past Kiner Falefa in between him and Bichette. It's a ground ball single for Torres with one out. And I know that it's intimidating to come inside with a fastball to these guys. Torres, Soto, Judge, Stanton. But you have to do it because that sets up all of your other pitches. If you can't come in, these guys know it and they just look out over the middle of the play just like that. Yeah, it looked like they wanted a back foot slider there, but instead Kikuchi actually threw a strike when they were looking to throw a pitch off the plate. Good contact from Torres. Sets up Juan Soto with one out and a runner on first. The pitch. Fouled off the mask of Kirk, 0-1. Soto's going to walk around the plate for a second. He taps Kirk on the left shoulder to make sure he's okay. Yeah, Soto taking a little bit of a stroll just to give, just to give Kirk a breather. Although, I don't know if it's because he wants to take a stroll, but you never know with Soto. <laughs> Soto's going to ask for time now. Kirk will stand up for a moment. And Soto now in a discussion with home plate umpire Emil Jimenez. I think he's talking to something about the clock. He keeps pointing his two fingers at his eyes like I was looking out there or something like that. Perhaps Jimenez was letting him know that he was about to have a pitch clock violation, and that's why Soto asked for time. Aaron Boone went to the top step of the dugout, but will now back down once again, the seventh-year manager for the Yankees. No ball, one strike count. Runner on first, one out, no score, bottom of the third. The pitch to Soto. Breaking ball in there, strike two. And Aaron Boone looking pretty suave over there with the hat kind of on the top of his head, the aviators. Kind of hiding in the corner of that. In <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Oh, two pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Soto stumbles back after whiffing on that breaking ball. Fifth Kikuchi strikeout today. There are two down. Yeah, Kikuchi missed his spot again. Alejandro, before the pitch started, he was pointing at the ground. Trying to get that pitch down in the dirt, and Kikuchi kind of leaves it over the inner half, but Soto swings right through it. Maybe that's why Soto was upset, not capitalizing on a potential mistake. Here's Aaron Judge, the pitch. Fastball inside, ball one. Scoreless ball game, Blue Jays and Yankees. Glaber Torres on first, Aaron Judge at the plate with two outs. The 1-0. Swing and a miss. Aaron Judge only played in 106 games last year, mostly because of a toe issue he dealt with after he ran into an outfield wall and even had to miss a couple games this spring because of the same toe issue. The 1-1. Fouled back. 97 from Kikuchi on a middle-in fastball. One and two. I love that pitch right there. 97 in on the hands of Aaron Judge. And again, Aaron Judge is an intimidating guy in that batter's box, but you have to come inside. Judge four for 20 against Kikuchi career, a 200 average. One, two pitch. Didn't get Judge to chase on a slider low, ball two. 
I'd love to see another fastball in at the hands. Judge loves swinging through that pitch. 59th pitch of the day for Kikuchi coming right now. Missed his spot and the fastball gets away from Kirk. Going up to second base is Glaber Torres. That'll likely be scored a pass ball, but Kirk was standing up because the spot was supposed to be up in the zone. Kikuchi missed down below the plate and Kirk had to readjust really quickly. Yeah, I think they were trying to go up and in at his hands. Just like I said, Aaron Judge has that, he has a little hole in his swing, but it's up near the hands. Kikuchi trying to get there, but he kind of overthrows it. And that ball gets by Kirk. So now a runner in scoring position. Torres up to second, two outs, full count. 0-0, zero, zero, bottom of the third. Kikuchi looks back at second, delivers to Judge. And it's a breaking ball hammered to right field. Springer going back, and it's foul, and they'll do it again. Judge yeah. couldn't keep that outside slider straight enough. No, and again, Kikuchi missed his spot. He's missed his spot about four or five times in a row. That slider is supposed to be in but he leaves it out over the middle of the plate and Judge almost gets enough of it. Judge took about three steps down the line like he might have had it and then slowed down, realized, and turned back. Did land in the second deck, though, probably 20 feet wide of the foul pole and right. Only 314 out to right field, 318 to the left field pole, 408 to dead center. Stanton on deck. The 3-2 pitch to Judge. High and outside, ball four. Second walk today for Aaron Judge. And pitching around him became a lot more palatable after the runner advanced to second. Yeah, I don't, I don't dislike the way they attacked him. I think that Kikuchi could have hit his spot a couple more times, but once Glaber gets to second base, you kind of pitch around him. That brings up still dangerous John Carlos Stanton. Stanton, 34 years old, in his 15th major league season. First and second, two outs, the pitch. Inside, ball one. And I don't care if John Carlos hitting 143. He has that closed stance. He's 6'6", 250, and he always has that scowl on his face when he's in the batter's box. Just see his eyes peeking out from his helmet with that extended ear flap, too, protecting his jaw. The 1-0. Breaking ball fouled back. The OG of that e of that extended ear flap. Stan was hit by a pitch in the face many years ago. Had to miss a significant period of time. Injuries have really marred Stanton's Yankee tenure. The 1-1. One -one. Fastball strike two. I would never say that John Carlos Stanton is not still dangerous. He certainly is. But last year, coming off a year in which he hit 191, which was the worst of his career and had an on-base plus slugging below 700 for the first time in his career, did still hit 24 homers. The 1-2. Down and away, Kirk slides to get in front of it and keep the runners at first and second with two outs. Yeah, of course he's not, he's not hitting for average like he used to. But if he's up in the eighth or ninth inning, he's always dangerous he can always hit a game tying home run he's still got that 500 foot power in, in there 2-2 Two -two. fastball fouled back and Kikuchi here in the third inning just offered his 66th pitch of this start Stanton's biggest year for the Yankees was his first year with them 2018 and he actually debuted that season at Rogers Center as a Yankee Hit two homers in the first game in pinstripes. 2-2. Two -two. Stanton spoils another. And he thought things were going to be easy after that. I was at that game. <laughs> Those were not like wall scrapers or, uh, you know, just, just getting over the wall homers. They were absolute rockets from Giancarlo Stanton. That was coming off his 2017 MVP season. Kikuchi's going to step off and turn around. This has been a long plate appearance. Didn't really look like he had any intent to throw to second, but after six pitches to Giancarlo Stanton, he'll just get a little bit of time here. Pardon me, seven pitches to Stanton to just regroup. 2-2 again. 
Fastball called a ball. Kikuchi puts his hands on his head for a moment. And that was certainly a strike. He did miss his spot, and Kirk had to reach across the plate. But Kikuchi, the victim of a bad call right there to keep Stanton alive. The challenge system's coming. I'm telling you. Instead of the inning being over, it's still first and second. Two outs, no score, bottom of the third. The 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Kikuchi with a fist pump. He's fired up after his sixth strikeout of the day. One hit for the Yankees, two runners stranded, no runs. And to the fourth we go, 0-0, Toronto and New York. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. They are among the greatest to ever play their sports. Caitlin Clark is the all-time scoring leader. They are legends and icons. Howie Bird hit the chop with no second thought. I don't know how he did it. And you can hear them right now on the all-new Sirius XM app. We are here with Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark. I'm so focused on winning. It's never anything I ever take for granted. Here comes Larry Bird, the Hall of Famer, and he just won Legend of the Year. Legend of the Year, isn't that something? For access to the game's greats, we lie on the leader in sports audio. Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. You love listening to baseball. You love talking about baseball. You love yelling at your buddies about baseball because they love baseball, and so do we. That's why Sirius XM has the only channel on the radio dedicated to baseball 24-7. It's MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89. News, opinions, passionate baseball talk from former players and GMs, plus interviews with players, managers, and executives, and much, much, much more. If you can hear me right now, you've got MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89, and on the Sirius XM app. The most important person in sports is you, the fan. Let me tell you something. I'm a real fan. And your place for sports talk is Mad Dog Sports Radio, where your voice is heard all day long. I couldn't wait to get into the truck and turn on 82. Share the thrill of victory. The joy, the jubilation. I can't stop smiling. And the agony of defeat. When is this franchise going to realize people really care about this? Passionate sports fans call 888-MAD-DOG-6. You gotta love sports. Mad Dog Sports Radio, Channel 82, or anytime on the Sirius XM app. 24-7, 365. Coverage of all things NASCAR. All things NASCAR happens exclusively on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, Channel 90. The fourth inning is presented by Bet365. Download the Bet365 app for today's baseball odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. 19 plus play responsibly, Ontario only. Stroman's pitch to Bo Bichette is high and we're underway in the fourth. No score, Blue Jays and Yankees. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Bichette, 0 for 1 with a strikeout today. The 1 0. Outside, 2 0. That strikeout came with a runner on third and Springer, and one out was the biggest offensive chance so far for the Blue Jays. 2 0 pitch. Bichette swings and lines it foul, 2 and 1. Yeah, that was a big strikeout for Marcus Stroman. You always want to try to put the bat on the ball no matter where it goes with less than two outs and a runner in scoring position, especially a runner at third base. Stroman has struck out three today in three innings. His 2-1. Called strike on a pitch that looked low. That was the rare splitter from Stroman, and it's 2-2. Two and two. That actually was pretty good. Had a lot of good downward action to it. Out of the zone, but... <laughs> 2-2 pitch. Bichette spoils another one. Marcus Stroman, a guy who the Blue Jays picked out of Duke in 2012, made almost 130 starts with the Blue Jays and five in the postseason. His 2-2 pitch. Down and away, ball three. After the Bichette at bat, we'll go for the first time today to the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. Justin Turner on deck. Davis Schneider do up this inning as well. 50-second Stroman pitch is grounded softly to third, charging in birdie. He whizzes it over to first to retire Bichette. The out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by St. Louis Bar and Grill. Devilishly good since Toronto first raised the trophy in 92. Join them for wings, ribs, beer, cocktails, and catch every play at your local St. Louis Bar and Grill. Download the app or visit stlouiswings.com for more details. Always devilishly good. 
with Bichette retired, here comes the longtime Dodger, but also Oriole, Met, and Red Sox, Justin Turner, who takes strike one. Two games underway right now in Major League Baseball, one of them happening in the Midwest. Long hesitation from Stroman, the 0-1, down and away, one ball, one strike. The Tigers are ahead 3-0 on the soon-to-be Sacramento Athletics, the Oakland Athletics. Tarek Skubal with a good start for Detroit. 1-1 to Turner is smoked to third. Birdie bobbles. It's into left field. He makes a long throw to first. Won't be in time despite the dig by Rizzo. With the fact that ball was hit 101 miles an hour, they might give Justin Turner a hit there. He absolutely blistered it at John Birdie. I mean, I think they'll give it an error just because it was hit right at him. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, it did hit him kind of right near the belt. But still, Justin Turner is on fire right now, hitting everything on the screws. Even in, in his first at-bat, he hit that line drive that Volpe made that tough play on. First pitch to Davis Schneider called strike one. They do give an error to John Birdie. Yeah, looking at the replay, that was hit right at him. I think if it was hit a little bit to the right or the left, they would have given it a base hit, but clearly an error. Schneider 0 for 1 today with a flyout. The 0 1. Outside, one ball, one strike. Back on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard. Home run for Matt Vierling started the scoring for the Tigers. Tarek Skubal pitching four innings of one hit scoreless baseball so far for Detroit. 1 1 to Schneider. Down and away. Two balls, one strike. Only the other game is about to start is a matchup of the Cubs and Dodgers. Two teams off to strong starts, although the Dodgers are really strong. They're seven and two to start the year. Stroman in the set. Kicks, delivers. Misses outside again, three and one. The power of David Schneider is talked about a lot, but he pairs that with a pretty good eye. He's a guy who walks at a high clip. Runner on first, it's Turner taking a three and a half step lead. One out, no score, top of the fourth. The 3 1. Swing and a miss. Middle, middle fastball. Schneider swings through it to make it three and two. Yeah, that was middle, middle at 89 miles an hour, but still it had a lot of run on it and kind of just snuck under the barrel of Davis Schneider. He got big there. You know he was thinking Homer with that swing. Now the payoff. Called strike three on the outside edge. Schneider having a discussion about it. That pitch was way further outside than the one Kikuchi threw last inning that was called a ball. But regardless, Emil Jimenez sets down Schneider. There are two outs. Yeah, but that was that beautiful backdoor sinker. Like I said, not many guys throw that pitch anymore, especially with that much movement on it. And it comes back and just clips the black on the outside part of the plate. Schneider didn't like it, but that was a strike. First pitch to Biggio, ripped down the right field line. It's a fair ball rolling into the corner. Turner around to third, picked up by Soto in the corner, and they'll have to hold Justin Turner there. It's a two-out double for Kevin Biggio and a potential chance for the Blue Jays with second and third and two outs. Yeah, if anybody else was standing on first base, I think they would have scored there, but Justin Turner doesn't have the best speed on this team, and he has to be held at third base. For Biggio, another extra base hit. He had a home run in the Blue Jays opener. Found a fastball over the heart of the plate and lined it over the head of Anthony Rizzo, the first baseman. So Alejandro Kirk, who's one for one today, has a chance to drive in maybe a pair. Kevin Biggio, conversely, is one of the faster runners the Blue Jays have. He's on second. Turner's on third, and pitching coach Matt Blake is out to talk to Marcus Stroman right now. Infield plays deep with Kirk at the plate. Alejandro's driven in four runs so far this year. The pitch. Down low, ball one. That's a good take from Alejandro Kirk. Good sinker down in the zone. Stroman's sinker is really, really good right now if he can keep that thing down. The righty fiddling with the ball in his light blue glove. Fires home. 
Swing and a miss by Kirk, who chased a cutter outside, one and one. In addition to playing back, the defense plays Kirk about as straight up as you can play him. The outfield shifts a little bit to his opposite field, center fielder Aaron Judge in right center. Kirk's always been good at using the, the big part of the field, so playing him straight up is probably the best way to do it. Long looking from Stroman in the 1-1. Bounced. Good pick by Trevino. Stroman does have to be careful. Should a pitch get to the backstop, there's a chance Turner could take off for the plate. Well, it'll have to get all the way to the backstop <laughs> for Turner to score from third base. Although he's got a big lead because John <laughs> Birdie's playing pretty much at the back of the dirt. 66th Stroman pitch. Bounce and another block there by Trevino, who throws back to third, Turner back standing. Three balls and one strike now, Alejandro Kirk in control of the count. Coaches always say that the best way to get back to third base if the catcher is throwing is to just stand up straight and let the ball hit you. I've never tried that. Well, you were a pitcher. But Justin Turner probably is the one guy that would just do that. Dalton Varsho on deck. Second and third, two outs, no score, top of the fourth. The 3-1 is lifted down the right field line. Rizzo's going to give some chase behind him into his left. It lands way into the seats. It's a full count. That was another middle middle fastball from Stroman who's starting to leave a couple over the plate for the Blue Jays here in his fourth inning of this start. Well he gets away with those just because there's so much movement. If that ball is straight that ball's in, in the outfield bleacher somewhere. Kirk's going to ask for time as Yankee Stadium was starting to get loud. They don't like him stopping the momentum. Never left the box though. Taps the near corner of the plate and hoists the bat above his right shoulder. The 3 2. Lifted to shallow right. Rizzo going back, makes the catch in fair territory to retire Kirk and retire the side. No runs on a hit and an error. Two left on for the Blue Jays. No score, middle of the fourth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra large four topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza .ca. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. George Springer has given the Blue Jays the lead once again. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome to the Timber Mart Broadcast booth. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Bottom of the fourth inning, Blue Jays at Yankee Stadium in a scoreless tie with the Yankees. Anthony Rizzo, Anthony Volpe, and Alex Verdugo will hit for the Yankees this inning against Yusei Kikuchi who has to be mindful of the pitch count, enters this fourth with 69 pitches offered today. Here's number 70. Rizzo takes low, ball one.
Kikuchi struck out Rizzo on a curveball back in the second. The 1-0. Breaking ball fouled off. One ball, one strike. 71 pitches through three is not ideal, but you have to remember, if you look at the first six hitters in this lineup, that's a lineup that, that fouls off tough pitches, pitch after pitch, pitch after pitch. So 70 through three, not rare, I guess. 1-1 one, one is pounded in the ground to second, picked up by Biggio. He'll throw to first, one out. Anthony Volpe coming to the plate, and he was a guy who would have hit in the bottom third of the lineup for a lot of last season. He's moved up a little bit in this Yankee lineup, and he has proved why he should. Came into this game batting 409, nine for his first 22, and he's one for one today. The pitch. Breaking ball high, 1 0. Oh. Just imagine the amount of pressure on this kid. I know he's not filling in for Derek Jeter because Derek Jeter retired in 2014. 1 0. Called strike. But we talked about the fact that he grew up. 45 miles away from Yankee Stadium. He was drafted in the first round as a shortstop by the Yankees. And here he is. The pitch. Sent back foul, one and two. And he's just 22 years old. Yeah, going to turn 23 in about three weeks. Went into a competition with Isaiah Conner falefa among others, last offseason in the spring, and won the shortstop job on opening day. The one two lifted to shallow left center. Varsha went back now coming in, makes the catch. Two outs. Varsha's got huge gloves in his back pocket. I don't know if those are like winter gloves or they're definitely not batting gloves. Well, Varsha's a guy who grew up in the Wisconsin area and then his dad worked for the Phillies, so he is used to the cold. Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> well, here's Alex Verdugo, who's wearing a similar kind of neck warmer type thing. First pitch is downstairs, ball one to the left-handed hitter. Verdugo, a second rounder by the Dodgers in 2014 out of a high school in Arizona. Parts of three seasons with L.A. 1-0. Hit on the ground to second. Biggio comes up with it again. We'll toss over to first. And that was exactly what Kikuchi needed. A quick 1-2-3 inning to down the Yankees and send us to the fifth in a 0-0 game. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Miss a second of the men's and women's final four on Sirius XM. We're going to have a new champion in women's basketball. The women's semifinals tip off tonight at 7 Eastern. Clark, right wing three. You've got to be kidding me. Then the men take the court tomorrow at 6. DJ Burns may have just put an exclamation point on an NC State win. Listen to Westwood One's coverage on Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84, and the all new Sirius XM app. This is C.J. Nikowski. Join me, Ryan Spielborgs, and Brad Lidge every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern as we give you the player's perspective of what's happening in baseball. He is possessed every time he goes out there right now. This is crazy. There's this energy that certain players bring. It's Loud Outs every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 89, and the all-new Sirius XM app. The best amateur players in women's golf will compete in the Augusta National Women's Amateur. Rose Zhang is your Augusta National Women's Amateur Champion. Sirius XM is your exclusive home for this premier event in the world of golf. Coming into the event, I knew that this wasn't going to be an easy fight. Hear the Augusta National Women's Amateur tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern on PGA Tour Radio Channel 92 and NBC Sports Audio Channel 85. And then on Monday, Masters Radio returns on Channel 92 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. In season or out of season, the number one place for college sports is Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84. The fifth inning is brought to you by Desjardins Insurance. Helping Canadians through it all, Desjardins Insurance. Insurance with a heart so big it shows. Visit Desjardins.com slash heart today. Scoreless game with Dalton Varsho leading off. Marcus Stroman on the rubber for the Yankees. 
will take his time now into the wind. Long hesitation in the pitch. Barsho smokes it to right, but it hooks foul into the netting down the right field line. 0-1. I'm Ben Schulman. He's Chris LaRue. Varsho Kiner Falafa Springer for the Blue Jays here in the top of the fifth. Here's the 70th pitch of the day from Stroman. It's high, ball one. Stroman kind of twisting his hips, looking out towards center field, maybe trying to make his body feel comfortable. Might have felt something there on the last pitch. 1-1, one, one, fouled off, 1-2. and two. And this has definitely turned into a pitcher's duel, but also a, a high pitch count pitcher's duel. <laughs> <laughs> Although Stroman's at 71 now, Kikuchi's pitched a whole other inning to Stroman and is higher than that. The right-hander into the wind. One, two is low, two balls, two strikes. Kikuchi did have a quick one, two, three, bottom of the fourth, which will help him see a fifth inning. He's at 78 pitches on the day. Stroman just delivered his 72nd. The two, two. Bounce near the back foot of Varsho. Three balls and two strikes. Yeah, and Kikuchi threw, I believe, 90 pitches last game. So he'll probably go, or can go, 95-ish, maybe 100. Three-two pitch. Barsho hits it sharply on the ground up the middle. On the backhand side, Torres gloves it, slips, still throws as he's fallen down, and retires Varsho for the first out. On the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard, the Tampa Bay Rays start a series near the Rocky Mountains today. It's the Rays and the Rockies starting at 410 Eastern. Zach Littell against Austin Gomber in that matchup. Baltimore and Pittsburgh will start at 412 p.m. Eastern. Very specific. Grayson Rodriguez takes on Jared Jones. First pitch to Kiner Falefa's outside, 1-0. Our out-of-town score is brought to you by St. Louis Bar and Grill. Is the 412 because their area code is 412? No, and I would not have known that. But that's, <laughs> that's the former pirate Chris LaRue to my life. There you life. go. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. I have no idea. That's the only thing I could think of. I've never seen a 412 start before, although it is opening day for some people, I guess. Home opener at Yankee Stadium. The clouds have kind of returned. You can still see shadows behind the players, but not as much. The 2-0 called strike one. Kiner Falefa's 0 for 1, struck out looking in the third. Stroman's next offering. Pounded into the ground to short, charging in Volpe. Hard throw over to first, retires his former teammate, Kiner Falefa. Two down for George Springer with the bases empty. Stroman's fastball's hovering around the 89 90 mark, and I know that seems really, really slow, but. His fastball is moving so much that it's still effective. It's also really cold. It's only 8 degrees. It is a little bit lower than his average. Last year, he was a little bit more 91, 92 on the sinker. Pitch to Springer. Down and away, ball one. Two outs in the base is empty and out away from being halfway through this game. It's the Blue Jays batting in the top of the fifth. No score, Toronto and New York, 1-0. In there, strike one. Springer doubled off Stroman in the first, flied out in the third. 1-1 one, one pitches down and away, 2-1. and one. Here's Stroman's 82nd pitch of the day coming to George Springer. Check swing, pitch was outside, appeal to first, no swing, says Lance Barksdale, 3-1. and one. And now Springer has to really zone in on a specific pitch, a specific spot. You can't swing it at Stroman's pitch. You have to swing at your pitch. Here's the 3-1. Called low ball four. Looked like it got some of the zone, but Springer will take the benefit of that call there from Emil Jimenez and earn a walk his second time aboard today. He extends the inning for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Yeah, that was a good job by, by 
Springer, that ball was not in his in his hot zone, and he knows that Vlad is coming up next, so it's good to get on base, let Vlad do some damage. Vlad is 0 for 2 today, a pair of ground outs. Here's the pitch. Foul back 0 and 1. Guerrero has hit 12 home runs in his career at Yankee Stadium. The most of any road ballpark he's played it in his career. The 0-1. Guerrero slices it down the right field line. That'll give Soto a chance who's up close to the netting but leans on it and watches it fall into the second row of seats. 0-2. Guerrero had that three homer game at Yankee Stadium a couple years ago. Two off Garrett Cole in that game. Still looking to make his first offensive impact today. No balls, two strikes, two outs, runner on first. 85 pitches for Stroman here in the top of the fifth. His two strike pitch to Guerrero. Swing and a miss, strike three. Chase the cutter away. It's the fourth Stroman strikeout and he strands Springer to end the top of the fifth. Halfway through, still searching for our first run. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track. Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern. It's the Cookout 400 from Martinsville Speedway. Check and fly, baby. Yeah. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car. And on the all-new Sirius, Sirius XM, XM app. Oh, yeah. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern. It's the Cookout 400 from Martinsville Speedway. Check and fly, baby. Yeah. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. Hi, this is Ray Hudson, and for all the biggest matches from Club Soccer's Holy Grail, the UEFA Champions League, tune in to Sirius XM FC 157. At Radio Network. Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by Crown Rust Protection. Bottom of the fifth inning, no score. You say Kikuchi still on the rubber for the Blue Jays. His first pitch is delivered outside to John Birdie, 1-0. And after that last strikeout of Vlad, Stroman kind of danced off the mound, and Vlad was shaking his head looking at him. 1-0, line to right field, a base hit for Birdie to start off the bottom of the fifth for the Yankees. Let's take a look at the injury report brought to you by Bergmanis, Pryra Personal Injury Lawyers. If life has thrown you a curveball and you're striking out with your insurance company, get ahead of the count and call Bergmanis, Pryra Personal Injury Lawyers. You focus on getting better, and Bergmanis, Pryra will take care of the rest. Visit BP Lawyers. .ca. Before we get to the specifics there, Jose Trevino is going to step in. Struck out in the third inning. Runner on first. Nobody out. Bottom of the fifth. No score. Blue Jays and Yankees. Kikuchi kicks and delivers. Trevino squares to sacrifice. Bunt and twists back out of the way. 1-0. For the Blue Jays, Jordan Romano's bullpen yesterday went well, according to John Schneider. Next step potentially is a live BP session where he faces hitters and then getting into rehab games. And Schneider said it's probably just going to be one session, although he did clarify, depending on how Romano feels after the live. Kikuchi's going to throw over to first back, standing his birdie. Eric Swanson threw live to hitters yesterday. Didn't get a ton of information, but it went well, according to John Schneider. And on Sunday, Alec Manoa planning to go four innings and 65 pitches in his first rehab appearance with single A Dunedin. The 1-0. 
Called strike on the inside edge. Danny Jansen could catch that potentially. Blue Jays catcher on the IL has hit BP now, but they want to get him working on a machine with some high velocity and see how he handles that. One one fouled back by Trevino one ball and two strikes. Only other thing I have to report Joey Votto is still doing defensive drills right now. They say he's getting better every day but has not done anything offensively still. Good to hear all the way around. The one two pitch. Hits sharply on the ground to first. Vladdy steps on the back, throws to second, and they have Birdie in a rundown. Bichette back to Vladdy, who tags him out, and it's a double play for the Blue Jays. A roundabout 3-6-3 double play, and a nice defensive play between Guerrero and Bichette. Yeah, sometimes I forget just how good Vlad is over there at first base. Such a smooth play. Picks up the baseball. Actually struck pretty well by Trevino. Steps on the bag with his right foot, and then kind of does a, a, a low three quarters throw, and that's a tough throw because Birdie is in the baseline. You have to throw it outside of the baseline. It was a great play by Vlad. Guerrero, the 2022 Gold Glover at first base. So the base is now empty with the top of the order coming up. It's Glaber Torres to the plate. Bo Bichette and Alejandro Kirk on the mound talking to Yusei Kikuchi. It's obviously big to clear the bases before the top of the order comes up. And also it could help Kikuchi finish this inning. The Blue Jays have Trevor Richards warming. Yeah, that was a big play for Kikuchi because he's at 84 pitches now. Probably let him go to 90, 95. He threw 90 in his last start, but he's looking great so far. He looked, he's, he's been great all game. He's just throwing a lot of pitches. We're here in the Timbermark broadcast booth, by the way. I'm Ben Schulman. He's Chris LaRue. Torres, Torres is one for two, the pitch. Breaking ball in there, strike one. I could see them saying, and I'm just speculating, Juan Soto on deck's a left-handed hitter, so you let him have Soto, maybe that's the last one he faces. Kikuchi's 0-1. Bounce to the plate, one ball, one strike. Yeah, in a perfect world, you don't want him facing Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton. With like 93, 94 pitches. But with that being said, his stuff is still pretty good. I've seen a couple 97s just randomly out of him. That means he's still still healthy and still strong. 1-1 one, one breaking ball left outside. 2-1. and one. Base is empty after the double play. Two outs. Bottom of the fifth. 0-0. Zero, zero, Toronto and New York. The 2-1. Fastball in there. Strike two. Kikuchi has six strikeouts today to two walks. Both walks issued to Judge, who's in the hole. 2-2. Two, two. High with the fastball, just missed. Three balls and two strikes. Oh, I love that spot. He actually didn't miss his spot. Yep. Alejandro Kirk was set up right at the hands of Glaber Torres, and he didn't move his glove. They wanted Glaber to try to swing at that ball. Glaber, Glaber actually normally swings through those types of pitches. 3-2 breaking ball fouled off. Yeah, I should clarify, just missed the zone, not just missed this spot. Last pitch fouled back by Torres was the 90th of the day for Kikuchi. Richards has been warming for a while now. He's probably ready to go whenever the Blue Jays need him. Kikuchi licks his fingers, wipes them on his left pant leg. 91st pitch of the day for Yusei Kikuchi. Coming to Glaber Torres right now. Swing and a miss, strike three. Kikuchi with a yell and a fist pump. His seventh strikeout of the day to finish off five scoreless innings. If his day is done, it was a good one for the left-hander as he leads the Blue Jays to the sixth in a scoreless game. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. 
Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. We're two men in a truck, the movers who care. You never know when cardiac arrest can happen. That's why each and every one of our trucks carries a life-saving Mikey defibrillator as part of our Mikey on Board program. Whether we're on the highway or in front of your house, we're prepared to help anyone whose heart may skip a beat. The Mikey Network has saved many lives, making Mikeys accessible to the public. And now they're on board our trucks. We're two men in a truck. Two men and a truck, the movers who care. I am by your side. Got a heart so big. On this you can rely. No mountains too tall for the strong boots to climb. I am by your side. That was Desjardins Insurance. Playing insurance with a heart so big it shows. Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Sprinting back, Varsho curling at the track. He leaps and he made the catch. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Bo Bichette leads off for the Blue Jays in the top of the sixth. The sixth inning brought to you by Desjardins Insurance, helping Canadians through it all. Desjardins Insurance, insurance with a heart so big it shows. Visit Desjardins.com slash heart today. Marcus Stroman in his sixth inning of work. 86 pitches on his ledger. His 87th comes to Bichette. And Bo hits it foul down the right field line. 0-1. No score, Blue Jays and Yankees. Top of the sixth. The left-hander Caleb Ferguson warming up for New York. I'm Ben Schulman. With me is Chris LaRue. A one down and away. One ball, one strike. Bachette, Turner, Schneider. 3-4-5 for the Blue Jays up this inning. The 1-1. One, one. Bow with a fly ball to center. Judge coming in, puts his arms out to his sides to call for the ball and makes the catch just off to his left. One out. Good changeup from Stroman right there. 81 down in the zone. Bo was right on it, just a hair out in front. Kind of hits a lazy fly ball to Aaron Judge in center field. So here comes Turner with the bases empty and one down. Top of the sixth inning, 0-0. Stroman with a deep breath, steps back, delivers. Strike one against Turner. Justin Turner's 0 for 2 today, although he hit a hot shot to short that was speared by Anthony Volpe in the first and then a frozen rope on a bounce to third in the fourth. Next pitch is wave that and missed. Strike two. And that one was actually bobbled by John Birdie at third. Turner reached first on an error. Stroman's 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Turner down on three pitches. There are two outs. And although Stroman's at 92 pitches, he's looking pretty solid too. Both Yusei Kikuchi and Marcus Stroman have elevated pitch counts, but they are both pitching very, very well deep into this game. Could be Stroman's last batter, the left-handed hitter, Kevin Biggio, on deck. But right now at the plate, it's Davis Schneider, who takes the first pitch outside, 1-0. On the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard, the A's made it closer in Detroit's, Detroit and Oakland's game. It's 4 2 now for Detroit. 1 0 pitch in there. 1 and 1. Brent Rooker hit a home run, his first of the season to make it 3 2. But then former A Mark Canna hit his second of the year, a solo shot to make it 4 2. Our out of town score is brought to you by St. Louis Bar and Grill. 1 1 to Schneider. Called strike, looked a little bit low, but regardless, it's 1 and 2. 95 pitches for Stroman. Fans on their feet. Two outs. Nobody on. No score. Top of the sixth. The one-two. Outside. Ball two. And I'm having a lot of fun watching Marcus Stroman. He is just throwing that sinker all over the plate. And it is just moving all over the place. His two-two to Schneider. Down and away. Ball three. Jose Trevino is actually setting up off the plate to let that ball run back over the plate so it has the chance to be a strike. That's how much it's moving. Payoff to Schneider. Fly ball to center field. Judge racing toward left center. He'll be called off 
by the right fielder, pardon me, right center, right fielder Soto makes the catch. And that ends the inning. Strowman clapping his hands into his glove. He goes six scoreless and likely finishes his day with that flyout by Schneider. No score, middle of the sixth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rose Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Hey, it's Taylor. April 7th. It's finally here, beginning this Sunday for one month. Hello, Blue Jay fans. I'm Craig Ballard, host of your daily Locked On Blue Jays podcast. Locked On Blue Jays is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Blue Jays brings you the latest Blue Jays news and analysis and breaks down all of the action. Locked On Blue Jays is everything a Blue Jays fan could want all in a 30-minute daily podcast. Download Locked On Blue Jays right now on the SXM app, available with all trials and popular plans, or wherever you get your podcasts. Search Locked On Blue Jays. Get ready for the 2024 NFL Draft on Sirius XM NFL Radio. Touchdown, Caleb Williams. Catch exclusive interviews with the top prospects as they begin their journey to the NFL. And hear pick-by-pick coverage of the 2024 Draft from Detroit. With the first pick, the Chicago Bears select. Your home for the 2024 NFL Draft is Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 in the car. And on the all-new Sirius XM app. After the game, join us on MLB Network Radio. We're talking baseball with you all season long on Sirius XM Channel 89 and the Sirius XM app. Sportsnet Radio Network. You say Kikuchi will pitch into the sixth inning despite 91 pitches in his second start of the year. Blue Jays sent him back out in a lefty-lefty matchup against Juan Soto. First offering is low ball one. We talked about at the break after the bottom of the fifth. Do they send him out? Do they not send him out? But this is a matchup he's done well on today. Soto 0 for 2. A 1-0. Ground ball foul. One ball, one strike in this scoreless game. Bottom of the sixth. Yeah, I actually said that that's a great idea, but it won't happen. Yeah. And here we are. <laughs> and Juan Soto is a very talented hitter against either side, but his numbers change dramatically against right-handed hitters Pardon me, right-handed pitchers and left-handed pitchers. The 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball low again. 2-1. and one. Soto nodding his head out at the pitcher. He's very demonstrative there in the lefty batter's box when he takes pitches. Kikuchi begging just a little bit for that call, but that was clearly below the strike zone. The 2-1. Breaking ball grounded foul. 2-2. Two and two. Soto again nodding out at Kikuchi as he fouls off that slider. Sometimes I don't know what that means. Does that mean that was a good pitch, or does that mean throw that again and that thing's in the bleachers? I think it's I think it's a gesture <laughs> of many meeting, meanings. Soto's going to ask for time. It's granted by home plate umpire Emil Jimenez. Aaron Judge on deck. 95 pitches for Kikuchi. The 2-2 two -two to Soto. Popped him up. Left side of the infield, Kiner Falafa sprinting toward the mound, makes the catch, and Soto moves to 0 for 3. And that is such an intimidating pitch. I saw Alejandro setting up inside. I know exactly what's coming. And he throws a 96 miles an hour fastball on the inside part of the plate. Great pitch by Yusei Kikuchi. Great end to his day. 96 pitches, five and a third scoreless for Kikuchi, who fist bumps his infielders as John Schneider comes to take the ball. Jimmy Garcia is going to enter to face Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton. When we return, let's go back to baseball control for now, though. Here's Show Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. Before we check the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard, a reminder that we do have Jay's talk today. Blair and Barker have the post game show as usual. They will be on TV and radio. They will take your calls via the back leg line. So if you want to leave them a message right now, you are certainly free to do so. The number to call, 416-413-3959. Or you can send them a text. Blair will take your text today, 590-590, name and location. The guys will be on TV and radio after the final out. All right. On that St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard, just two games outside of Jay's Yankees on the go right now. Tigers lead the Athletics 
4-3, top of the seventh inning. And in the bottom of the second inning in Chicago at Wrigley Field, the Dodgers lead the Cubs 2-0. A little uh, more action a little bit later on in about two hours. Rays, Rockies, Orioles, Pirates, Padres, Giants. All will get going in the 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific hour. Six games on the go in the NHL tonight, including the Rangers taking on the Red Wings in Detroit. That game gets going at 7 Eastern for Pacific on Sportsnet. The Oilers are going to hit the ice tonight as well. Later on, they'll take on the Avalanche in Colorado. That's at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on Sportsnet West. In one of the late games, Golden Knights at Coyotes. That'll be at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. The Raptors. Also in action, they'll try and snap a 15-game losing streak against the Bucks. They're in Milwaukee at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Uh, that'll be the time of tip-off on Sportsnet 1. And you can listen to Raptors reaction with Will Lou after the final buzzer. Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by Crown Rust Protection. Let's get back to the action. Here's Ben and Chris. Thank you very much, show. Jimmy Garcia takes over for the Blue Jays, making his third appearance of the season. He'll have the tough task of trying to retire Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton. It's a scoreless tie in the bottom of the sixth with one out and the base is empty. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Really good day for Yusei Kikuchi. Here's Garcia's pitch to Aaron Judge. It's smoked foul down the left field line, 0-1. Before we get to Garcia, five and a third for Kikuchi, four hits, no earned runs, two walks. He struck out seven, both of his walks to Aaron Judge, who's at the plate now. And if you're going to walk somebody, that's the guy you want to walk. The 0-1. Called outside, looked like it grabbed a little bit of the plate. That was the 0-1, pardon me, it's one ball, one strike. And he did have a little bit of an elevated pitch count, like we talked about, but... Yeah. Against this lineup, that's that tends to happen because they have guys that can just foul off tough pitches. One one pitch, rocketed foul to the right side, one and two. And you're also trying to be careful all game long against guys like this because this is a small stadium. This is a launching pad for if you wanna if you wanna throw that inside pitch to Juan Soto, that's a tough pitch because that porch and right is pretty short. The pitch to judge. Swing and a miss, strike three. Challenge fastball at 97. Garcia strikes him out, two down. Blue Jays fans, afternoon games are back at Rogers Center. Head to the ballpark on Wednesday, April 10th for a 3.07 p.m. start to see your Blue Jays take on the Seattle Mariners. Don't miss out. Visit bluejays.com slash tickets to get yours today. Jimmy Garcia with a big first out of his appearance. He'll now take on Giancarlo Stanton, who's 0 for 2. The pitch. Fastball, strike one. Two out, space is empty, no score, bottom six. The 0 1. Outside, ball one. And they're clearly trying to attack the inside part of the plate, even off the plate to Giancarlo Stanton, not, not letting him get his long arms stretched out because that's when he does damage. Kirk inside again. 1-1 one, one pitch is left outside and Stanton hits a fly ball to right. Springer backing up, going right. Now moving to his left, makes the catch and ends the inning. Nice start to the outing there for Jimmy Garcia who retires Judge and Stanton to make it a 1-2-3 inning and after six still scoreless at Yankee Stadium. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Timber Mart is Canada's building center. A solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of air miles reward miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Two in a truck, 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 two in a
Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready to order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Center. Visit timbermart.ca. I put my heart on my lips. I gave it all I could give. This is Kevin Biggio, and you're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Top of the seventh inning of a pitcher's duel. Zeros on the board between the Blue Jays and the Yankees. Marcus Stroman is out of the game after an impressive first start at Yankee Stadium in his Yankees career. Left-hander Caleb Ferguson is the first out of the bullpen for the Bronx Bombers to take on Kevin Biggio, Alejandro Kirk, and Dalton Varsho. Supposedly, but... A pinch hitter to start this top of the seventh. Biggio is out. Ernie Clement bats from his spot from the right side. Ferguson's pitch. Downstairs, ball one. Biggio's day ends one for two with a double. Clement's coming off the bench. Being 267 so far this year. The 1 0 from the southpaw. Clement hits a high fly ball to left field. Verdugo going back. It's gone. Pinch hit homer. Ernie Clement, his first of the season, and the Blue Jays are up 1 0. A 407 foot blast from Clement. Don't call him just a contact hitter. It's 1 0 Toronto. And as he's rounding second base, he's pointing out to left field. I'm not sure what that's about, but maybe he has some friends out there. But what a swing from Ernie Clement. John Schneider looks like a genius right now. Pulling the strings to bring the righty into bat against the lefty Ferguson. Now Alejandro Kirk flies a ball foul down the right field line 0 and 1. Perhaps Clement pointing to the Blue Jays' bullpen out there, too. That's where the Blue Jays' relievers are. Ernie hit a couple of homers in spring. But that is first one of regular action this year. 0-1 pitch to Kirk. Ferguson gets a call on the outside part of the plate, 0-2. That fastball from Ferguson was supposed to be on the outside part of the plate. And it ended up being on the inside part, and Ernie did not miss it. Drills it into left field. Ferguson coming over in a trade in February from the Dodgers. 0-2 offering. Almost hits Kirk in the back foot. One ball and two strikes. And this crowd is deflated. Marcus Stroman was electric <laughs> for six innings. Allowed just three hits to the Blue Jays. All of a sudden, Toronto's jumped out to a lead here to start the top of the seventh. Ferguson, a former Dodger draft pick in 2014 in the 38th round. Pretty remarkable that A, he signed in the 38th round, and B, that he's here in the majors. He misses high to make it 2-2. Two and two. There's no such thing as a 38th round anymore. There's no such thing as a 21st <laughs> round anymore. Cut the draft in half in 2021. 2-2. Two, two. Kirk lines it to right field, sinking in front of Soto for a base hit. Two for three day for Alejandro Kirk. The Blue Jays have back-to-back -back base hits here to start the seventh. Just before Alejandro got that base hit, they showed Davis Schneider and Ernie Clement in the dugout, and Davis Schneider was kind of grabbing his arm and shaking him with excitement. Maybe he gave him a tip how to hit a home run earlier in the day. Schneider pointing out to left field. Maybe telling him where that ball landed. That one got out in a hurry. <laughs> one nothing Blue Jays. Runner on first. No outs. Top seven. Left on left matchup as Dalton Varsho swings and hits a fly ball foul. 0-1. For Ferguson, that's his first run allowed this year. Three previous appearances, each spanning one inning. He had walked three but only given up one hit before that Ernie Clement homer. Now two hits in this appearance against the Blue Jays. Ferguson shakes off a sign. Now has what he wants. Set at the belt. Brings his glove up to his chin. Kicks. Delivers. 
Barsho grounds it foul, nothing in two. Before this at bat, I was thinking that I wouldn't even be upset if the Blue Jays tried to manufacture this this run somehow. Maybe Varsho bunt Alejandro over to second base. There's no outs. It's obviously not going to happen now, but. The 0-2. Outside, one ball and two strikes. You don't really see small ball anymore. No, not really, although Varsho bunts more for base hits, but about as much as anyone in baseball. Open stance for the left-handed hitter. The one-two. Fouled off again. Varsho 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and a ground out. Blue Jays taking the lead on Ernie Clement's pinch hit home run. Ferguson's offer. High ball two. And that pitch right there is a pitch that Varsho swings at a lot. That was a good take by him. A fastball elevated just out of the strike zone. The 2-2. Varsho with a looper to left center running out into the outfield. The shortstop Volpe makes the catch on the sinking liner. One out. On the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard. We've updated you a lot on Detroit, Oakland. That game now 4-4. The Athletics jumping back into that one, trailed by as many as three runs. On the north side of Chicago, it's 2-2 between the Dodgers and the Cubs. Former Blue Jay Teoscar Hernandez with a two-run single to start the scoring for L.A. in the first. But then a Dansby Swanson homer and a Nick Madrigal RBI single have made it 2-2. Isaiah Kiner-Falefa up for the Blue Jays, called strike one. Runner on first, one out, one nothing. Toronto, top of the seventh. The pitch. Rather a long hold. And now the pitch. Called strike. Nothing in two. IKFO for two today. Strikeout looking and a ground out. Next pitch bounced in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. Aaron Boone brought in the lefty Caleb Ferguson because two out of the first three hitters were supposed to be left-handed for the Blue Jays to start this inning. That plan was foiled by the pinch hit opportunity by Ernie Clement. The one-two. Kiner Falefa hits a sharp ground ball. Diving stop at first by Rizzo. Gets up, throws to second to retire Kirk. That's the only out they can get on a 3-6 fielder's choice. Two outs now, still a runner on first in the top of the order coming up. And we talked about how good Vlad is, is over there at first base, but Anthony Rizzo, another good defender. He's been a good defender for a long time. He knocks that ball down and makes a great throw from his knees to Volpe at second base. Four good gold gloves in the career of Anthony Rizzo. And Aaron Boone back out to the mound after facing four batters and allowing the home run. A pitching change here for the Yankees. Ferguson's day is done, and we will go back to show Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. Let's check out that St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. Some Canada soccer news. thought this was pretty interesting from earlier this afternoon. Joshua Cloak of The Athletic reporting that Canada soccer is having conversations with the French Football Federation for Canada's men's national team to play against France for a June friendly in France. Other reports from L'Equipe also saying it would be June 9th in Bordeaux. That would be three days after Canada plays the Netherlands in Rotterdam. So we'll keep our eyes out for that for some international football news. Uh, let's check out the scoreboard in the NHL. Six games will be on the go on the ice tonight, including the Rangers. They are not in New York. They're in Detroit taking on the Red Wings. That game will get going at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on the main Sportsnet channel. The Oilers are going to hit the ice tonight as well. They'll take on the Avalanche in Colorado at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. That'll be on Sportsnet West, one of the late games. Golden Knights at Coyotes, that'll be on the main Sportsnet channel as well, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. We'll also get the Raptors in action. They'll try and snap their very lengthy losing streak against the Bucks. That game is in Milwaukee, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, the time of tip-off. It's on Sportsnet 1 this evening. You can listen to Raptors' reaction with Will Lou after the final buzzer. And, of course, we do have Jay Stock, Blair and Barker 
will be on TV and radio today. They will take your calls via the back leg line. The number to call again, 416-413-3959. You can leave them a message right now if you so choose, or you can send them a text today, 590-590, name and location. Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by Crown Rust Protection. Let's get you back over to the call of the game. Here's Ben Shulman and Chris LaRue. Thank you, show. Two outs, runner on first, one nothing. Blue Jays, top of the seventh. Dennis Santana making his season debut. The right-hander on the first base side of the rubber deals to George Springer. Called strike one. The outside part of the plate has seemingly expanded as the weather has warmed up <laughs> in New York as it's getting wider and wider where strikes are being called. That one looked off the plate. Santana hunched over, glove up near his ear, now puts it down to the belt, his 0-1. Springer with a line drive to center. Judge backing up, twisting around, makes the catch in front of the track to end the inning. Ernie Clement with one of two Blue Jay hits. His solo home run gives Toronto a 1-0 lead at the seventh inning stretch. YMCA about to ring out at Yankee Stadium. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. <laughs> So that's our company name, two men in a truck. Ca. We're lots of men with lots of trucks. So give us a call today. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed-rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Go to pizzapizza.ca. I am by your side. Got a heart so big, on this you can rely. No mountains to draw for the strong boots to climb. I am by your side. That was Desjardins Insurance. Playing insurance with a heart so big it shows. Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Runner going, throw down his second. They got him. On Sportsnet 590, The Fan, and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome back to Blue Jays Baseball. Show Ali with you at Baseball Control. I'm in our downtown Toronto studios. Jays lead the Yankees 1-0 as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Said this before, but another reminder that we do have Jays talk today. Blair and Barker have the postgame show. They will be on both TV and radio today. They'll take your calls via the back leg line. So if you want to leave them a message, you can do so right now if you like, or you can wait until after the game. Either way, the number to call today, 416-413-3959, or you can send them a text right now, 590-590, name and location, and I'll pass those along to Blair after the final out of this one. Quick check of the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. Dodgers and Cubs tied at two at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Teoscar Hernandez with a two RBI single to get the party going in Chicago. The Tigers and A's tied at four right now in Oakland. Lots of home runs in this game. Matt Veerling, Mark Hanna both going yard for the Tigers. Brent Rooker and Quebec's Abraham Toro going yard for the Oakland Athletics. So those are the quick checks of the games going on right now on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by Crown Rust Protection. Jays lead the Yankees 1-0 thanks to Ernie Clement's solo home run off Caleb Ferguson. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Here's Ben Shulman and Chris LaRue. Thanks, show. Welcome back to the Timbermark broadcast booth. Not YMCA. I was close. Just God bless America. <laughs> Another, you know, it's off the same album. They do do YMCA at Yankee Stadium, which is one of my favorite traditions when they drag the infield. They just kind of, I like even more than them. They stop when it gets to the chorus and drop it and do YMCA. But I just like watching them kind of pump their right arms to the beat of YMCA <laughs> as they go. A lot of unique stuff at Yankee Stadium where the Blue Jays are trying to pull off a series opening. Win. Yeah, obviously Ernie Clement with the huge home run today. But you say Kikuchi, he was good. He, he threw a lot of strikes, 97 pitches, 58 strikes. Of course, he, his, his pitch count was elevated a little bit, but... 
His fastball had a lot of life on it. We saw that his last pitch of the game was 96 miles an hour. Marcus Stroman was good, too, though. I, I, I don't enjoy saying that, but Marcus Stroman was really good today. Both pitchers had very, very strong outings as starters, but the Yankee bullpen giving up a run in the top of the seventh. The Blue Jays bullpen trying to maintain a lead now. They haven't really had a ton of that in close games, other than maybe that 2-1 win where they had to maintain the lead in the ninth against the Astros. They haven't had to go to a lot of leverage spots so far, big wins or big losses. Here's Yenesis Cabrera, the left-hander, coming on to the mound now for the Blue Jays with Anthony Rizzo and Alex Verdugo both scheduled to hit. Anthony Volpe, the right-handed hitter, sandwiched in the middle. Yeah, Yenesis Cabrera's last game, he gave up three runs in, in an inning, and then he had to take his two-game suspension. He's back, and he's ready to go to hold on to this lead for the Toronto Blue Jays. Jimmy Garcia finished off the sixth inning. In place of the starter, Yusei Kikuchi. The Blue Jays also pinch hitting Ernie Clement there for Biggio. So Clement's going to go to third. Isaiah Kiner Falefa is going to flip from third to second base. They've said a couple days ago that they like to keep Clement on the left side of the infield if possible. We've seen him there a couple times and he's looked great. He's looked he looked great at shortstop. He's been he's been very good at third base. I have all the confidence in the world with him, especially on the left side of that infield. Anthony Rizzo to the plate to start the bottom of the seventh. And home plate umpire Emil Jimenez calling time and stepping out in front. No one asked for it. He was making a motion like Garcia, pardon me, like Cabrera needed to look at him. It's not one of the rules in the rule book, but I digress. The pitch downstairs, ball one. Rizzo today is 0 for 2, strikeout and a ground out. Overall, just four hits for the Yankees, all singles. The 1 0. Called strike, 1 and 1. It's worth noting that while the Yankees have gotten off to an incredibly impressive start and Juan Soto's been all over every highlight reel, their offense as a collective came into today 14th in the majors in runs, middle of the pack. The 1-1. One, one. Outside, 2-1. and one. Yeah, Aaron Judge is hitting just 172. Giancarlo Stanton hitting 130. Anthony Rizzo hitting just 207. It's not just the Blue Jays. The 2-1. Slider in there for strike two. Cabrera's got two types of breaking balls. Also a big fastball. Off-speed pitch as well. First full season with Toronto being acquired before the deadline from St. Louis. The 2-2. Breaking ball down and away. Full count. He has yet to throw a fastball. I would love for him to sneak a fastball inside here. Volpe on deck. Rizzo at the plate now. Cabrera from the first base side of the rubber kicks and offers. Breaking ball grounded softly up the middle. Bichette over to the second base side, gloves it, throws to first. In time, one out, and a good assist there by IKF, who hit the deck to make sure that he wasn't in the <laughs> way of Bichette. He went all the way down, chest to the dirt, to make sure he was out of the way. Yeah, that was a really good pitch from, from Cabrera. A slider down in the zone. Anthony Rizzo kind of just tops it and hits it in the... Hits it right at Bo Bichette. Actually, he kind of ranges to his left a little bit, but good job by IKF hitting the dirt. Here's Anthony Volpe, a right-handed hitter. The pitch. Breaking ball loops in there at 77 for strike one. One out, nobody on the bases. one nothing Blue Jays, bottom of the seventh. Volpe has one of the four Yankee hits. The 0-1. Breaking ball misses down. One ball, one strike. Alex Verdugo, the schedule hitter next. Another left-handed hitter. Southpaw Cabrera in his first inning of work. His 1-1 one -one is a breaking ball hit high down the left field line, but it hooks foul into the seats by about 
35, maybe 40 feet, honestly. It's one and two. Volpe asked for time, adjusts his batting gloves. Yankees fans trying to give him some juice right now. The Yankees trailing and without a run so far. Cabrera's 10th pitch of the appearance. Breaking ball lifted to center. Varsho running to left center. And stepping in front of him was Schneider. They'll turn and look at each other after Schneider makes the catch. And I can't read Lib super well, but I think Varsho said, I didn't hear you. That was very close to a collision there. Varsho pulled back at the last moment. Schneider did make a call, it appeared. Although superiority goes to the center fielder in that situation, technically. But no collision, and they got the out, so no harm done. Yeah, that's one of those dangerous, scary plays when two outfielders are running directly at each other and both saying, I got it. The pitch to Alex Verdugo. High ball one. And you can clearly see Varsho saying, I didn't hear you after that play. Oof, that could have been bad. Two outs, bases empty, one nothing. Blue Jays, bottom seven. The 1-0. -oh. High, 2-0. -oh. Calling all hot dog lovers. Get your ready. Get ready for a mouthwatering experience on Tuesday, April 9th. Is Looney Dog Night presented by Schneider's returns to Rogers Center. It's the ultimate challenge to see how many hot dogs Blue Jays fans can devour this year at every Tuesday night home game. The 2-0. Inside 3-0. Don't miss out on the action and join us in surpassing our record number of hot dogs eaten. John Birdie on deck for the Yankees. Two outs, three balls, no strikes on Alex Verdugo. The pitch. Fastball in there for strike one. And that's just his second fastball of the inning. He's thrown 14 pitches. Trevor Richards is getting loose for the Blue Jays. This is the third batter that Cabrera has faced, so the Blue Jays can take him out after this matchup with Verdugo. The 3-1. Fastball fouled back, 3-2. Were there times in your career where you had a bullpen and the pitch just didn't feel right and, and you went against what you usually would? Oh, I think so. But I also think that Cabrera is looking at that porch in right field and thinking, I need to throw some off-speed pitches. This is a short porch. Sometimes the, the way the field is kind of messes with your head a little bit. Payoff. Fastball down low. Ball four. Went to three straight heaters there. Missed on the last one to Verdugo, who walks with two outs. John Schneider's going to come out of the dugout and make a pitching change. Runner on first, two outs, bottom of the seventh, one nothing. Blue Jays. With Trevor Richards about to come in, let's go over to Show Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. Let's check in on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. Let's check in with Blair and Barker. Reminder that they do have Jace Talk today on TV and radio. They will take your calls via the back leg line. I've actually been monitoring the back leg line all afternoon. There's some good calls in there, so they'll definitely get to those after the final out of, final out of this one. The number to call right now, 416-413-3959, or you can send them a text today, 590-590, name and location. We'll get that up on Sportsnet after the final out of this game. Let's check in across the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard in the couple of games going on in the world of baseball right now. A's at Tigers, middle of the eighth inning, going to bottom eight, but lots of home runs in this one. Matt Veerling, Mark Canha, both going yard. Spencer Torkelson with his first double of the year. Riley Green, so a lot of the young stars for the Tigers showing out in this one. Brent Rooker hitting his first home run of the season as well, scoring Zach Galoff and, of course, Canada's own Abraham Toro scoring for the Athletics as well with his first home run of the season. So that game is tied at four. The Dodgers now trail the Cubs at Wrigley Field, 5-2. Right after our last update, Seiya Suzuki came up to the plate with the bases loaded and blasted one to clear the bases. So the Cubs now lead 5-2. Teoscar Hernandez has the only runs for the Dodgers in that one. Middle of the third inning, a two-run double. Some games going on in the NHL tonight. Don't forget Rangers-Red Wings. That game will be on Sportsnet at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. The Oilers-Avalanche game will be at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on Sportsnet West. And uh, one of the late games as well. That'll be on the main Sportsnet channels. Golden Knights at Coyotes. That game will be on 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Sportsnet. Blue Jays baseball brought to you by Crown Rust Protection. Let's get you back to the action. Here's Ben Shulman and Chris LaRue. 
show Trevor Richards is in the game for the Blue Jays two outs runner on first bottom of the seventh inning and at the plate John Birdie representing the go ahead run Birdie's one for two today single to right field struck out first pitch change from Richards is strike one these two were briefly teammates on the 2019 Miami Marlins The 0 1. Change up in the dirt. One ball, one strike. It's fastball change for Richards, who's coming in for the fifth time this year. His four appearances already led the American League. One one. Change up lifted to right. Very shallow. IKF running out the second baseman makes the call and squeezes it. For the third out, Richards gets the out the Blue Jays needed, strands the Cabrera walk, and keeps it 1-0 Toronto as we go to the eighth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rose Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The 2024 NBA postseason starts in just over a week, and Sirius XM NBA Radio brings you all the action. Slam! Our experts break down every game. This is what playoff basketball is all about. Cover every storyline. Prove me wrong. Prove the people wrong. And bring you every can't-miss moment on the court every single night. He's going to fire up a three for the win! Your 24-7 home for hoops throughout the playoffs is Sirius XM NBA Radio Channel 86 in the car. And on the all-new Sirius XM app. This is Bob Kendrick, president of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum and host of the Sirius XM original podcast, Black Diamonds. Hear stories about the legends of the Negro Leagues and conversations with the all-time greats they've influenced, like five-time World Series champion Derek Jeter. I don't care what race you are. You need to know your past. This is U.S. history. It's not just baseball history. Hear over 70 episodes of the award-winning Black Diamonds podcast, available now on the Sirius XM app or wherever you get your podcasts. Wake up! Wake up, everybody! This is Steve Phillips from the leadoff spot on MLB Network Radio. Join me and former Major League Baseball players Eduardo Perez and Xavier Scruggs as we react to all the latest news and scores across baseball and have plenty of fun along the way. Steve, you were so right about that. I don't know if anybody else thinks we're funny, but I think we're funny. Why are you putting us or we into this? The leadoff spot, weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Channel 89, and on the SiriusXM app. The Blue Jays are in flight, leading 3 nothing. Blue Jays fans, this is Ross Atkins, and you're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on Sirius XM. Join the Toronto Blue Jays in honoring the life and legacy of Jackie Robinson at the ballpark on Monday, April 15th. Be among the first 15,000 lucky fans to receive a special Blue Jays Jackie Robinson 42 hat. Visit BlueJays.com slash promotions to learn more and purchase your ticket today. Ernie Clements pinch hit solo homer the difference in this one nothing game Dennis Santana takes back over for the Mets his pitch to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is fouled back 0-1 I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue Santana came in and retired George Springer to end the seventh in his first appearance of the major league season righty's 0-1 Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Nothing in two. And the sun is finally out. Actually looks like a nice day there in New York. Can see it shining off the top of the blue helmet for Guerrero, who asks for time and steps back in, trying to break an 0 for 3 day. Two strike pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Swung over top of the cutter. Guerrero is down for the first out. Dennis Santana pitched nine times for the Mets last year, was DFA'd on three separate occasions, passing through waivers each time, elected free agency in August. Ended up signing with the Yankees on a minor league deal in December. Blue Jays actually saw him in spring training in a start. Pitch to Bo Bichette, called strike one. Yeah, he's a big guy, a lot of moving parts. Arms flailing, legs flailing, but it comes out 95 miles an hour. His 0 1. Breaking ball down and away. A 6 2 right hander from the Dominican Republic. About a week away from his 28th birthday. The 1 1. 
Bichette fouls it back one and two. One nothing Blue Jays in the top of the eighth. Nobody on one out Bichette up with Turner on deck. The pitch. Down and away two balls two strikes. Blue Jays are hoping for some insurance. It is tough to shut out the Yankees. The 2 2. Foul tipped and it bounced and hit the groin of Trevino. Two balls, two strikes. And like we were talking about last time, Chad Green pitched, but it looks like Chad Green is the closer of this team. Use <laughs> Jimmy Garcia in big spots. 2 2. Bounce softly to third. Charging in Birdie on the run. Throws it over to first. Beats Bichette by a step. He's the second out. I mean, I think you could argue which one between Green and Garcia is really the higher leverage reliever. They've twice brought in Garcia in very high leverage situations. But the Blue Jays are limited, of course, with Swanson and Romano out right now. Wouldn't be shocked if Trevor Richards comes back out for the eighth after pitching the final out of the seventh. They also do have Tim Mesa fresh today after a day off if they want to use him. Two outs of the pitch to Justin Turner. Breaking ball drops in the top of the zone for strike one. You can probably also argue what part of the game is higher leverage, a one-run ball game in the ninth inning at Yankee Stadium or a one-run ball game in the seventh inning with guys on base at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> and the batter's coming up. Oh, one foul tipped, 0-2. Oh Both pretty big spots. Brought in Garcia back in the sixth inning to take on Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton. Those two will hit at least one more time today. Two strikes, two outs, no one on. The pitch to Turner. Down and away, ball one. Justin Turner hitless in his three at-bats, reached on an error in the fourth. The one-two. Down and away, two and two. These two former teammates, Santana pitching for the Dodgers from 2018 to 2021. The 2 2. Turner pops it up. Behind him, foul and out of play. Dennis Santana made 12 appearances for the Dodgers during their World Series winning 2020 season. Picked up a ring with L.A. Two two again. Turner with a line shot hooking foul into the corner down the left field line. That's a nice season. Twelve appearances, although the season was short. It was a 60 game season, but still 12 appearances in a ring. I'll take that. Two two again. Outside ball three. Turner's not going to let Santana finish this inning easily. David Schneider's on deck. Two outs. Base is empty. One nothing Blue Jays top of the eighth. The three two. Ground ball foul. We'll do it again. And that's what Justin Turner does. He is annoying at the plate. He fouls off tough pitches. And then as soon as you make one mistake, he drills it. 188 home runs. 188 in the career of Justin Turner. Ninth pitch of the at bat. Outside, ball four. Turner will take off the shin guard and jog down to first. And that gives Davis Schneider a chance. And 20 pitches now for Dennis Santana. Blue Jays taxing the bullpen a bit of the Yankees so far after a six inning scoreless start by Marcus Stroman. one nothing Toronto, the pitch to Schneider. Called strike one. 
Santana recalled to the roster today after Jonathan Loisega went on the 60 day injured list. A one. Schneider with a fly ball to left will hang up and land in the glove of Alex Verdugo who barely had to move to end the inning. The walk stranded middle of the eighth inning one nothing Blue Jays at Yankee Stadium. You're listening to Blue Jays baseball brought to you by your local family owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Which loony dogger are you? The Pork and Knifer, Splatterer, Condiment Queen, or Big Dipper? This season at Rogers Center, every Tuesday home game is Looney Dogs Night, presented by Schneider's. You will have the opportunity to purchase $1 hot dogs from various concession stands around the stadium. Then show the world your Looney Dog style. Because whether you're the Mustard Maven or Ketchup King, no Blue Jays game is complete without hot dogs. So don't miss out on this deal. Looney Dogs Night, presented by Schneider's, every Tuesday home game. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to Fixed Rate Pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Go to pizzapizza.ca. by your side Got a heart so big On this you can rely No mountains too tall For the strong boots to climb I am by your side That was Desjardins Insurance Playing insurance with a heart so big it shows Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart this is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Jose Barrios with a trio of strikeouts to end a scoreless six. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership or the Sportsnet Radio Network. Trevor Richards starts Jose Trevino with a strike, and the bottom of the eighth has started. Blue Jays up 1 0 over the Yankees. The 0 1, yanked outside, one ball, one strike. Defensive changes for Toronto. Scratched out of the start, but available to come off the bench. Kevin Kiermeyer is now in center field for the Blue Jays. Dalton Varsho has been pushed from center to left. Davis Schneider is out. 1 1 change, down and away, 2 and 1. Blue Jays doing this after Schneider took his at bat to end the top of the eighth. He's unlikely to hit again. It would have to go to extra innings more than likely, or it would be a huge Blue Jay rally already for that spot to come up. Next pitch is a changeup that drops on the outside edge. Strike two. I'm Ben Shulman alongside Chris LaRue. Richards technically in his second inning, gotten out to end the seventh. His eighth pitch of the afternoon. Fastball called strike three. Got a break on the outside edge. That has been a wide spot of the zone all day, and Richards uses it to retire Jose Trevino. But he was so tough in that at bat. He threw a lot of good changeups, and it looked like Jose Trevino was clearly expecting something off speed on that last pitch. And Trevor Richards just sneaks that 92 mile an hour fastball in the outside corner. Here's the top of the order. Glaber Torres looks at a ball that bounces in front of the plate. 1-0. and Chad Green is getting loose for the Blue Jays. We'll see if they let Richards try and take on this whole inning or if they try and piecemeal it together. Still have Tim Meza available too if they want to use him later. The 1-0. Change up. Called strike. Trevor Richards' change up looks awesome right now. It's dropping off the table. So I would just stick with him until I guess... Until he gets out of this inning. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One, one. Changeup drops into the top of the zone for strike two. It's Torres up right now. And then the left-handed hitting Juan Soto is next. Which in theory would be a good matchup for Richards as his changeup breaks away from lefties. 1-2. Changeup bounced. Torres lays off. And I know this is probably not what he's going to throw, 
but a fastball in would be really effective right here. One out, base is empty. The pitch to Torres is a changeup called strike three. Kirk dropped it, so it looked a little bit awkward, but that pitch was in the zone. Torres unhappy about it, and as he was arguing, Emil Jimenez didn't even look at him, just pointed to his dugout, said, go, go, it's over. <laughs> I don't know why Glaber is arguing. That was clearly a strike. That It didn't even drop out of the zone at all. That was a great changeup. Maybe he was arguing that he didn't make contact with it. It kind of looked like it was a foul ball. Yeah, perhaps that's the case. Maybe he was saying he tipped it, and because Kirk didn't catch it, he'd still be alive, but... He's out on called strike three. Richards says back-to-back -back strikeouts. His first pitch to Soto, high and outside, 1-0. and Juan Soto's 0 for 3 today, 2 for 10 against Trevor Richards in his career. The 1-0. Changeup down and in, 2-0. and Yeah, I don't think Juan Soto likes that really good changeup. Although Richards does rely upon getting guys to chase, was just as good as anyone, 100th percentile in chase rate last year. Juan Soto doesn't really chase. He's led Major League Baseball and walks three times. 2-0 fastball, called strike one. That pitch looked outside off the plate, and Soto turned his left palm to the sky, and now he's telling home plate umpire Emil Jimenez that was outside as, he's, as he motions his hand away from his body. Well, you just said it. Juan Soto doesn't chase. He has a, a very good eye up there, and that ball was a ball. <laughs> Next pitch is low, three and one. Soto still talking to Emil Jimenez. Two outs, space is empty, one nothing Blue Jays, bottom of the eighth. The three one. Change up drops in. That's strike two. If Richards can finish this inning and bridge to green, that would be big for the Blue Jays. Clinging to a one run lead. Aaron Judge on deck. The 3-2 to Soto. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got him on the changeup. Soto whips his bat into the ground in his helmet right after. A 1-2-3 inning for Richards as he strikes out the side. Top of the ninth coming up next, 1-0 Blue Jays. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Here's what's happening on Sirius XM Sports. It starts tonight, the women's final four. Sirius XM College Sports Radio 84 with a preview and play-by-play -play of South Carolina versus NC State. Then the matchup of UConn and Paige Beckers versus Caitlin Clark in Iowa. All on Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84 and the Sirius XM app. Sirius XM Sports, wherever you are. Your team plays here. Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there too. This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24-7 as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus, you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM Channel 89. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. Blue Jays fans, your manager, Sean Schneider, joins MLB Network Radio's Power Alley every other Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. I got all the confidence in the world in Joe Romano. I've known him for a long time. I know his demeanor. And I, I always say when you're talking about a closer, giving up a couple runs in the ninth inning, it's just so much more magnified than a starting pitcher giving up a two-run homer. Managers at the mic on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM 89, and the SXM app. 24-7, 365. Coverage of all things NASCAR. All things NASCAR happens exclusively on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, Channel 90. Sportsnet Radio Network. Ernie Clement leads off the top of the ninth inning for the Blue Jays. First pitch from Dennis Santana. Outside, ball one. one nothing Blue Jays at Yankee Stadium. Cloud cover once again. No sunlight at Yankee Stadium right now, but the Blue Jays with just a little bit of daylight in this game with the one-run lead thanks to Clement, who takes strike one. And that zone has really expanded. He's starting to call that slider and that fastball off the plate. Not sure why, but... That zone is bigger now than it was earlier on in the game. The 1-1. Clement swings and misses, strike two. 
Ernie came off the bench in the seventh, pinch hitting for Kevin Biggio because a left-hander came into the game and hit the second pitch he saw out of the yard for his first home run of the season, second as a Blue Jay, and just his fifth in his major league career. Next pitch is shot to right center. Soto going back just in front of the track. He turns and faces to make the catch. One out. Welcome to the Timbermart Broadcast booth. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. First of three games between the Blue Jays and the Yankees in the Bronx. Alejandro Kirk's going to come up now to face Dennis Santana. Kirk is two for three today. The pitch. Fastball in there. Strike one. Been a tough start at the plate this year for Kirk, batting 167 now after two singles. The 0 1. Check swing tapper foul, 0 and 2. But he has played a ton, a lot more than they had planned to play him when they thought that they'd get a fresher Kirk this year. He started all but one game this season, coming off of September last year, in which he played in every game except for game 162. 0 2 pitch. Down low, Kirk takes. One out, base is empty, top of the ninth. The 30th pitch from Dennis Santana coming to Alejandro Kirk. Downstairs again, ball two. Good take from, from Kirk right there. A good slider down in the zone, just off the plate. He's starting to get there. Hit one off the wall in right field to start his day, then single to right a little bit softer in the seventh. 2-2 two, two is a liner to left center field. That's down for another base hit. Aaron Judge will pick it up in center. Kirk is three for four. And like I said, he's starting to get there. He's just seeing the ball better. You can tell he's making better decisions today, hitting the ball with a little bit more authority. Yeah, he's, uh, you can see he's happy at first base. Three hit day for Alejandro Kirk. By far the leader in hits for the Blue Jays. He has half of their six. Jose Trevino making a point to the dugout. He's going to go out to the mound. Anthony Volpe coming in from short. Matt Blake is going to visit with his pitcher, Dennis Santana. John Schneider said before the game, Brian Servin likely to get the start tomorrow. Kind of an odd series timing-wise where it goes day game, night game, day game again. So it'll be Kirk in the two day games, most likely Friday and Sunday, serving tomorrow, catching Kevin Gosman. Well, I don't know about you, but I've never done a, a 1 p.m. Friday game before. Obviously, today is the home opener, so that's a little bit different. But the 1 p.m. Friday game is very, very rare. I'm telling you, funky stuff happens in the minors. <laughs> I've, I've, I've had some weird times. I've never done a 412, though, like we were talking <laughs> about. 412, I'm telling Pittsburgh, you, Pittsburgh, Baltimore coming up today, 412. We should look into that. Runner on first, Santana ready to go now. Dalton Varsho at the plate. The right on left offering. Low ball one. If Toronto was, was, uh, had a start time at 4-1-6, would you have said that? I mean, that I, I, I would have <laughs> said it. I think so. How do you not notice it then? 1-0. <laughs> Broken backgrounder foul. 1-1. One and one. Well, what you, you played for Florida, what, Miami's 305? Is that the area code, I think? That almost sounds normal, though. Well, that's what I was going to say. I feel like that one could happen all the time. Like, they've had a lot of 305s, yeah. maybe. Marshall getting a new piece of lumber here after that one snapped on the Dennis Santana cutter. Dalton hit list today, 0 for 3. Santana back on the mound. Varsho's got a new bat. Taps the plate twice and pinwheels it before hoisting it above his left shoulder. Runner on first, one down. one nothing Blue Jays, the 1-1. Bounced. Good backhanded pick by Jose Trevino. It's 2-1. And, and it would be huge for Toronto if they could score this run. Somehow manufacture this run. I'm not saying bunt, but Varsho needs to scratch and claw and get that runner to second base somehow. Preferably a base hit. 1-1 one, one pitch. Marshall fouls it back, 1-2. and two. Pardon me, that was the 2-1, two now it's 2-2. Two and two. 
Oh, I'd say one counterpoint, at least to the bunt. Don't disagree that they do need to move the runner over. Is it's not a guarantee that Kirk scores from second on a single <laughs> anyway. So do you want to give up an out to move him over? If it's Varsho on first, I think it's a different situation. The 2-2. Two -two. Inside ball three. The only thing that makes me nervous is the flags are really blowing out to center field right now. That is the only thing that makes me nervous coming up in the bottom of the ninth. Aaron Judge will lead off the ninth for the Yankees with Giancarlo Stanton and Anthony Rizzo behind him. Full count, runner on first, one out. one nothing Toronto top nine. And the pitch. Varsho with a hard hit ball up the middle. That's a base hit rolling into right center field. Kirk will stop at second. Varsho has his first hit of the day, and he moves him over with a base hit, like you said. Now two runners on here for Isaiah Kiner Falefa. Yeah, that was a really good swing from Dalton Varsho. Obviously feels good to do that using the big part of the plate or the field. That that ball was down in the zone, and he just takes it, hits it right back up the middle. That will be the last pitch that Dennis Santana throws today. Aaron Boone going to the bullpen. We will go back to baseball control. Here's Sho Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. Before we check in on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard, one more reminder that J-Stock follows the final out today with Blair and Barker. They're on both TV and radio. They will take your calls via the back leg line. So the only number to call today, 416-413-3959, or you can, of course, send them a text today, 590-590, name and location. I can see them. They're, they're getting ready in the studio right now. So uh, they'll take your calls and text after the final out. All right, let's check in on that St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. A's at Tigers just wrapping up. A 5-4 final score for the Tigers. Gio Urshela with an RBI double to uh, give the Tigers a game winner in the bottom of the eighth inning. So the Tigers get the win there. The Cubs at Dodgers. Pardon me, Dodgers at Cubs at Wrigley Field. This game's still 6-2 and the fourth inning. Say Suzuki clearing the bases a little earlier to give the Cubs the lead. The game's in the NHL tonight. Six games on the go. The Oilers are going to hit the ice as well later on. They'll take on the Avalanche in Colorado at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. That's on Sportsnet West. If Connor McDavid and company get at least one point tonight, they will clinch a playoff spot. Pretty simple. So basically, they make it to overtime, win or lose, and the Oilers have uh, clinched a spot in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Rangers will take on the Red Wings a little earlier. That game gets going at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. And the Golden Knights at Coyotes, that's a late game. That's on the Sportsnet channels as well. The main ones, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by Crown Rust Protection. Let's get you back to the action in the Bronx. Here's Ben Shulman and Chris LaRue. Thank you very much, Show Nick Birdie, the right-hander, is going to come on for the Yankees here, trying to hold the Yankees in this one-run deficit. It's one nothing for the Blue Jays at Yankee Stadium. Brian Servin in the pinch run for Alejandro Kirk. Dalton Varsho on first, Servin on second, one out, and Isaiah Kiner-Falefa at the plate. Birdie's pitch. Down and away, and it scoots away from the catcher. Servin taken off for third. The throw bounced to third, and Servin will get in there in time. Immediately, the pinch run paying off as that wild pitch only got a couple feet away from Jose Trevino, but both Servin and Varsho advanced. Yeah, pinch running Servin for Alejandro Kirk at second base was such a good idea. There's no way Kirk gets to third base on that pass ball there, but Servin scooting to third, and Dalton Varsho getting to second. Great job by Servin. That'll bring the Yankee infield into the grass line. The 1-0. High ball two. Birdie with a high velocity four-seam fastball. That one was 97. He's a guy who's moved around a fair bit in his major league career. This is his third team, the 2-0. Almost hit Kiner Falefa, runs up and in at 98. Birdie spent last year with Chicago. Also had parts of three years with Pittsburgh, but injuries have really slowed him down. 3-0 pitch. Called strike one, 99 from Birdie, who seems to be heating up as this appearance starts. Yeah, Connor Falefa obviously had the red light there. Didn't even flinch on that fastball from Birdie at 99 miles an hour on the outside part of the plate. Second and third, one out. one nothing Blue Jays, top nine. The 3-1. Way high, ball four. Kiner Falefa walks. The bases are loaded for George Springer. 
And Springer has to be really patient here. Don't try to do too much. I know you want to hit a grand slam in this situation, but all he has to do is put the bat on the ball and leg out a single. Get to first base somehow. He does have seven grand slams career. Here's the first pitch. Called strike. Looked a little bit off the plate outside, but that's been a, a strike now probably for the last three-ish innings. Yeah, there's that expanded zone. Middle infielders back up a little bit to try and turn two. Corners remain in. Base is loaded. One out. The 0-1. And it goes all the way to the backstop. Sherman coming to the plate. The throw by Trevino will be eaten in his right hand. He never releases it. Sherman scores on the wild pitch. 2-0 Blue Jays. And that takes a little bit of the pressure off of Springer there. That is a huge run. Instead of being 1-0, it's 2-0 now. And Chad Green can breathe a sigh of relief just a little bit. That pitch nearly hit Springer. So Trevino really didn't have any sort of angle to catch it. And Springer frantically was waving his hand, his left hand, to try and get serve in home. He does. The pinch runner advances twice on wild pitches to score the Blue Jays their second run. Here's the 1-1. It's down and away to Springer. Two balls and one strike. Springer one for three today with a double and a walk. Second and third now for the Blue Jays. The other two runners advanced as well. One out, infield, all the way back in. 2-1 pitch. Inside, 3-1. and one. I actually thought that hit Springer for a second. I did too. But I think the glove of Trevino hit Springer is what made that second noise. 3-1 pitch. High ball, 4. Birdie has been wild, and he is hearing it right now from Yankees fans. He has to face another batter, at least, because of the three-batter minimum. He's issued two wild pitches and walked both batters he's seen. And here comes Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And like I said with Springer, you can't get too big. You have to wait for your pitch. I know that Vlad wants to hit a grand slam, but the most important thing right now for him is just concentrating on scoring that run from third base. 3 nothing is a lot better than 2 nothing, especially with the guys coming up for the New York Yankees. Vlad has been patient this year. Six walks tied for the American League lead. Four career grand slams for Guerrero, who comes up with one out, and the base is loaded. 2 nothing Blue Jays. Sun shining down on everywhere but behind the plate once again. The pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. And that was not his pitch. That was a fastball off the plate outside. He has to wait for that ball middle in. That's where he likes that ball, middle in and up. Infield has moved back to try and turn two. The 0-1. Low, one ball, one strike. Trevino shaking his hand out. He didn't catch that one clean. 99 hit him in the palm. Yeah, he's shaking his head. He's not, he's not happy with that. Varsho on third. IKF on second. Springer on first. 1-1 one, one to Vladdy Guerrero. Foul tipped into the glove. A slider right on the outside edge for strike two. And again, he just kind of pulls off that pitch. He can hit that pitch. He just has to stay on it and use the big part of the field. He's just trying to do too much. Yankees getting a lefty up in the bullpen. 1-2 from Birdie. Vladdy with a fly ball foul. Toronto's doubled its lead in this inning from 1-0 to 2-0 where it sits now. Base is full. One out. The 1-2 again. Foul tipped, but Trevino couldn't make the squeeze, and that leaves Guerrero still standing at the plate. Good job by Vlad, staying alive. Trevino not excited about that one. He thought he should have caught that, slamming his bare hand into his glove. Vlad gets another chance. 16th pitch coming for Nick Birdie. Oh. Outside, ball two. Was that Vlad that yelled? 
I think he yelled no. He's, <laughs> he's got like a little bit of Soto in him. I mean, the zone's expanded, but not that far. That not was that way far. outside. Now the 2 2. Guerrero foul, fouls it back again. It was right over the heart of the plate, but 99 miles an hour from Birdie. Yeah, that's the pitch that Vlad wants back. That middle, middle 99 mile an hour fastball. He swings right through it, just gets enough, fouls it back. Birdie looking in. He's in the set. Kicks and delivers. Guerrero fouls back a slider. He had a good hack at that one as well. That was a slider right down the middle. When Vlad's on, that thing is in the seats. Fouled back a number of pitches in this at bat. It's an eight pitch battle so far. Two two again. High ball three and it gets away from Trevino again. Coming home, Varsho. Throw to the plate. Not in time. 3 0 Blue Jays. That one may be a pass ball as it went off the glove of Trevino above the zone. And Nick Birdie has completely lost control of the baseball here. Yeah, but I think that Trevino's having a tough time catching Nick Birdie. Although that was a tough pitch. That was a fastball that Trevino had to, re had to reach for, but Trevino's having a tough time catching Birdie in this inning. Yeah, probably like a little bit of blame to share on both sides there. And with Dalton Varsho on third, immediately once it got past Trevino, the Blue Jays had a shot to score. Full count now, second and third, one out. The pitch. Guerrero shoots it foul down the right field line. This has been a 10-pitch at bat now, Guerrero versus Birdie. Yeah, he's, he's, doing a tough, uh, he's doing a good job fouling off some tough pitches. Eventually, Birdie will make a mistake and Vlad will make him pay. Infield in once again. Birdie's 21st pitch of the outing. Swing and a miss, strike three. He sets down Guerrero on a 100 mile per hour fastball. There are two outs. And we'll see if Birdie gets to go to a third batter. That was a well located fastball. One of the few that Birdie's thrown down and away at 100 miles an hour. And Vlad just swings through it. A fourth batter, rather. And they are going to give it to Birdie here. Could take him out now, but they'll leave him in there to face Bo Bichette. Second and third, two down, three nothing Blue Jays. The pitch. Bo hits a rocket foul to the right side, 0 and 1. Took Nick Birdie 21 pitches to record his first out. I believe it's three wild pitches. It is three wild pitches for Birdie, two walks and a strikeout. Chad Green still getting loose for the Blue Jays. The 0 1. Bichette hits it foul to the right side again. Nothing in two. Nate Pearson's actually getting loose as well. That's only if the lead is 6 nothing. I would imagine. Maybe 5 nothing. Maybe 5 nothing. I would, say, I would say 6 nothing. But. Springer on second, IKF on third. Oh, 2 to Bichette. Liner to the right side, caught at second, underhanded by Glaber Torres. The Blue Jays, though, score two runs on the inning thanks to the lack of control from Birdie. Three walks, pardon me, two walks, three wild pitches help Toronto to a 3 nothing lead. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Chad Green coming in, looking for the save. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. We're two men and a truck. And we've got lots of men and lots of trucks. Whether you're planning a move to a new home or to a new office down the hall, big or small, we move them all. We even sell packing and moving supplies. But no matter what you need, we'll do it with a smile. With a 96% referral rating and the professionalism you can trust, the choice is simple. So when you're planning your next move, call two men and a truck. Two men and a truck, the movers who care. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, 
your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza. That's the This is Jordan Romano, and you're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Chad Green on for the Blue Jays. Bottom of the ninth inning in the Bronx, and it's 3-0 Toronto over New York. Green will search for his 12th career save and first since he was a Yankee. Right now, facing the middle of the Yankee order, Aaron Judge, John Carlos Stanton, and Anthony Rizzo. I'm Ben Schulman. He's Chris LaRue. Last save for Green came in 2022, and he's going to have to face a tough batch of his former teammates here if he wants a save in 2024. Yeah, but he's going to be way more comfortable on that mound with a 3-0 lead. And the Blue Jays did such a good job in that in the top part of that inning to score those two runs. I know that, that Birdie helped them out a little bit with the with the wild pitches, but 3-0 is, is just so much better than one nothing especially as a reliever third appearance of the year for green who kind of had a pseudo save against houston in game two of that series his first pitch to his former teammate judge downstairs ball one brian servin remains in the game as the catcher he came in as a pinch runner after the kirk and varsho back-to-back hits to set up last inning he would come around to score on a wild pitch advanced twice on wild pitches in the inning one out to judge Called strike one and one. And you're right. The way you pitch Aaron Judge even in this inning completely changes when it's three nothing as opposed to one nothing. Yeah, you're not afraid to go right at him. The one one. Breaking ball hits softly to third. Picked up by Clement. He'll throw over to first. One out. I don't know if you saw those highlights on the TV earlier, but Chad Green, they're showing highlights of Chad Green pitching for the Yankees. 98-99 miles an hour. Green sitting more in the mid-90s at this point, but told me this spring that he feels better in his arm than he has felt in his career probably since high school was around what he said. First pitch to Stanton fouled back into the seats, 0-1. Yeah, he used to have really electric stuff. Still has the same stuff, the same invisible rise, rise high uh, spin rate fastball, just not the same velo on it. 0-1. Hit in the air, shallow right, Springer to his left, angling toward the corner, makes the catch. Stanton is retired, and there are two down. Anthony Rizzo represents the final chance here for the Yankees. And again, it's so much easier as a reliever to just attack hitters with a three-run lead. If it, if it was one nothing, Chad Green would have, hit, would have pitched those, those two big guys completely different. Even Rizzo, too, a guy who... In the mid-2010s, hit 30 homers, three straight years, has a lot of power. He'll bat from the left side with the bases empty, two down. The pitch from Green. Line drive to right, backing up Springer. He turns around and one hops into the wall. Springer picks it up, options it back into second. Rizzo will be held to a single. Yeah, he missed his spot just by about a hair. That was a fastball. It was supposed to be on the outside part of the plate. And he kind of threw it on the inside part of the plate. Anthony Rizzo got... Not all of it. I think he got jammed just a little bit, but good thing is you can still attack this, this next guy. Anthony Volpe coming up. The tying runs on deck. 3 nothing Blue Jays. Bottom of the ninth. Runner on first. Two outs. The pitch. Outside ball one. Guerrero holding on the runner on first, and I really can't figure out why in this 3 nothing game. I mean, he's not all the way holding him on, but... You'd think he'd play behind the runner, the 1-0. Down and away, 2-0. No, you let him go to third if he wants. That run means nothing. He's obviously taken his positioning from the coaches in the dugout. They're always shifting guys around. 2-0. Snap the breaking ball in there. Strike one. The only reason why you would want to keep him on first base is to, is to keep, keep that, the extra keep force. The, True. The that's, force that's a good out point. at second. Is but that worth it, though, over sacrificing range? You're right. You are absolutely right. The 2-1. Swing and a miss on 95 in the zone. 2-2. Two and two. Yankees down to their final strike. That is a good point, though. I, I would assume that's the justification. 3 nothing Blue Jays. Runner on first. Bottom of the ninth. Two outs. Volpe at the plate in a 2-2 count. Green kicks and delivers. 
Hard hit ball right side through into right field of base hit. Rizzo up to second. Volpe stops at first. And the tying run is to the plate. It's Alex Verdugo who has hit plenty of big home runs against the Blue Jays in his career. Yeah, the crowd is coming back to life, which is what you don't want in New York. But that was a good swing by Volpe. Just going with that ball, that fastball on the outside part of the plate, and he just hits it into that hole. Even if Vlad was playing him straight up, he wouldn't have got that ball. But good job by Volpe going the other way with it. The pitch to Verdugo. High drive to right field. Springer going back just in front of the track. Turns around, makes the catch, and the Blue Jays win it. Verdugo teases the Yankee fans with a long drive, but 10 feet short of the wall, Toronto makes the catch to end the game. Ernie Clement plays hero. The pitchers dominate today in a 3-0 shutout win at Yankee Stadium. A yeah. big one for the Blue Jays. I think that home run from Ernie Clement will be overshadowed, or sorry, will overshadow the great start from Yusei Kikuchi, five and a third innings, no runs, seven strikeouts. He looked great today, and, and he needed that start because Marcus Stroman was just as good. Marcus Stroman was incredible today for the Yankees. It was fun to watch both of them, but Ernie Clement coming up huge with that pinch hit home run. He's the new David Schneider. It came, <laughs> you got me there. It came down to the bullpens, and the Toronto bullpen prevailed over the Yankee one in a 3-0 win. We will wrap this one up on the other side before we send you over to Jays Talk. So stick with us across the Sportsnet Radio Network. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed any, uh, price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to Fixed Rate Pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza at Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Sportsnet 590, the fan, and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The Blue Jays win the series opener in the Bronx. A 3 0 win for Toronto, powered by some late clutch hitting and a little bit of shakiness out of the Yankee bullpen as well. Appreciate you sticking with us. We'll wrap this one up in a couple minutes and then send you over to Jays Talk with Blair and Barker. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. We talked about it a little bit right as the game closed, but let's look back at the starting matchup today. Marcus Stroman and Yusei Kikuchi both put up really good numbers, as we mentioned before. Six shutout for Stroman, five and a third shutout for Kikuchi. What specifically did you see from Kikuchi today that you thought made him more successful than his first start at the trot? Well, I said before the game that he needed to pound the strike zone early with his fastball, and I think he did that today. He threw a lot of pitches, but when you look at this, this Yankees lineup, you probably assume that you have to throw a lot of pitches to these guys because you don't want to groove one. You don't want to throw that pitch fat because Aaron Judge, Anthony Rizzo, Giancarlo Stanton, all those guys can hit easy homers, especially to right field because it's a small ballpark. So you say Kikuchi was probably cog cognizant of that and he was kind of working the corners, all four quadrants of the strike zone. But his fastball looked really good. He mixed in his, his slider, his curveball. I didn't see any change-ups today, but... He looked he looked great and I and and it couldn't have come at a better time because Marcus Stroman really really pitched well for the Yankees. I know he was pumped up for this game. This was his, his first game as a Yankee at home. His first game was on the road against the Houston Astros, but he looked incredible. His fastball wasn't overpowering, but you saw it was moving 
all over the place. Jose Trevino actually had to set up off the plate for those fastballs away so it could run back over and actually be a strike. So, I mean, Marcus Stroman, I had fun watching him today. I had fun watching Yusei Kikuchi. Both of those guys, it was it was a it was an elevated pitch count pitchers duel. I've never I, you you see those rarely, but today both guys had elevated pitch counts, but they both threw threw exceptionally well. Marcus Stroman, like you mentioned, six innings, three hits, no runs, one walk, six Ks. The Blue Jays had a double off him to start the game. Got the runner to third with one out, did not score. Had second and third with two outs in the fourth did not score as well, and that was really the only times they got close. Kikuchi really didn't deal with much trouble either. He at one point had first and second with two outs in the third inning. That was the only time a runner got into scoring position. He retired Juan Soto three times, struck out Giancarlo Stanton twice, got Anthony Rizzo to go 0 for 2 against him, and maybe tactically walked Aaron Judge twice for his two walks on the day to pair with his seven strikeouts. Jimmy Garcia came in for the Blue Jays in relief of Yusei Kikuchi. Got two outs to end the sixth, retiring Judge and Stanton. And then the Yankees had to go into their bullpen after Stroman's pitch count went up. They went to Caleb Ferguson, a lefty, to face Kevin Biggio. John Schneider pulled the rug out from under them, threw the right-hander Ernie Clement into bat against lefty Caleb Ferguson. And this happened. The 1-0 from the southpaw. Clement hits a high fly ball to left field. Verdugo going back. It's gone. Pinch hit homer. Ernie Clement, his first of the season, and the Blue Jays are up 1-0. Ernie Clement with the huge home run. Right after that home run, he was pointing to the left field bleachers, and, and you said it. He was probably pointing to the to the Blue Jays' bullpen. They were probably up in arms, screaming and yelling at him, and he was acknowledging that they were doing that. But after that home run, he was in the dugout and the camera panned to him and, and him and David Schneider were having a, a, a nice little moment where he was grabbing his arm and shaking him. You could see the excitement and what an unsung hero. I mean, I know everybody loves Ernie Clement. They love David Schneider, two guys that have come up huge for this team when before this game, the Blue Jays were second to last in the big leagues and in, in team batting average. And they needed this win, especially against a very, very good New York Yankees team. Blue Jays would add two on in the ninth inning with hits from Kirk and Varsho and some walks and wild pitches to score runs. Jimmy Garcia picks up the win. Blue Jays had three runs, seven hits, no errors, nine left. Caleb Ferguson with the loss, no hits, six or no runs, six hits, one error, seven left for the Yankees. Chad Green with his first save of the season. Appreciate you joining us today for my partner, Chris LaRue, our host and producer, Show Ali, and technical director, Tom Young. I'm Ben Shulman. Stick around because Blue Jays talk with Blair and Barker starts right now. Four and four on this road trip. The Yankees, it was their second loss of the year in eight games. It was their uh, home opener. The Jays' last two wins have come on a Davis Schneider home run, an Ernie Clement pitch at home run, and a ninth inning gift from the Yankees, John Birdie, three wild pitches, a couple of walks couple of runs scored. But again, I'm not asking how the Jays won this game. I'm just happy that they won it. Yeah, okay. If I'd have told you that uh, Bo and Vladdy were 0 for 10 with three strikeouts and you say Kikuchi was 7 for 19 throwing strike one and had a 21-pitch inning and a 31-pitch inning, would you have guessed that they would have won 3 nothing? No, I would have no. Definitely Especially not. the home opener in Yankee Stadium, and oh by the way, the Yankees are six and one on the season. Yeah. It, you know, again, this is about sort of taking advantage of some bad mistakes from a pretty good team that's gotten off to a good start. You know, Marcus Strom was really good. You got to zone in. You got to catch the you know the moving ball that he's trying to backdoor to right. He's out front. You can't let that travel. You let that travel. You're either missing it. You're fouling it off. When you do those two things, you're falling behind. You fall behind. And oh, by the way, a veteran guy don't throw hard anymore, Jeff. It's funny whenever he notices that the wind is blowing straight right. in from right field. Yeah. Now the right. I'm just assuming this. But right field is really close to him, right? And he's thinking to himself, okay, got a team that has trouble with the ball away. And oh, by the way, Mother Nature's doing me a favor by having the wind blow straight into right from right most of the game, at least early in the game when he was throwing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, give them credit. They, they got it done when they were supposed to get it or had to get it done. Yeah, I think we saw an early sign of that when Alejandro Kirk had the single in the second inning, one of his three hits today. But Alejandro Kirk's 
uh, single. Frankly, the wind kept it in the park. And I'm sure if you're Marcus Stroman, you're seeing that and you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep working away. Three nothing. The Blue Jays have beaten the New York Yankees in the first of a three game series. This is Blue Jays talk. We're on Sportsnet 590, the fan, the Sportsnet radio network, and welcome to those of you watching us on Sportsnet. We'll be doing this a number of times this season during afternoon games. We'll be doing Blue Jays talk. Um, we will so- solicit your texts. 59590 is the text line. And you can leave us a voicemail on what we call the back leg line in honor of my friend, Mr. Barker, 416-413-3959. John Schneider, who I, every now and then it's, it's nice to be reminded that, that, you know, the guy can manage a game given the criticism he gets. I'm being tongue in cheek here. Goes with Ernie Clement as a pinch hitter yeah. for Kevin Biggio. Uh-huh. Um, Puts Brian Servan in as a pinch runner for Alejandro Kirk yeah. when, on second base. Now, yeah. I mean, that's not that, that's probably not rocket science, but the fact of the matter is if Alejandro Kirk is on second base when the wild pitches start, eh, I mean, you may not be looking. Well, they're not scoring. You may say it like it is. It might be one. And one nothing for Chad Green going against Judge, <laughs> Stanton, Rizzo, Volpe, and Verdugo. Is a lot different than three nothing for Chad Green going. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I yeah, I think he did a really good job of bringing Garcia in when he brought Cabrera in with the two lefties and the righty. Mm-hmm. When he brought Richards in, look, Trevor Richards. I told you this. When, when standing behind that guy in spring training and throwing the changeup, you can see why he makes some really good hitters look really silly mm-hmm. at the big league level. He could tell him it's coming. Like if he if he somewhat locates it and can somewhat keep that fastball in the same area code with the changeup. He's pretty devastating. And I'm with you. The jury's still out on Chad Green. Uh, you know, some would say they can't wait for Swanson and Jordan Romano to get back. That Now you're sort of cooking with gravy. You can sort of put Chad, you know, where you want to put him. It would more be in the sixth and seventh inning than the ninth inning. Mm-hmm. I, I think they're sort of married to, you know, you give him a certain inning because of what he's coming off of with the Tommy John, and you want him to sort of find a routine and, you know, you're going to mix and match with Jimmy Garcia because you like his secondary stuff, and now he's throwing harder, and, you know, he's more consistent with the outer thirds of the secondary stuff, which, you know, when he's good doing that and not throwing that thing down the middle, which most big league hitters can hit hard, he's really good, and you can use him to meet the order big-time spots no matter what inning it is. So, yeah, John had a really good day. I mean, I know, you know, some John Snyder haters are going to have a real tough time admitting that, but he had a really good game, and, you know, again, it's <laughs> – Probably not the way you want to win these things on the road, but oh, the way the it. offense is doing things they'll or not it. doing things, they'll take it. Want to talk about that? We'll get to the back leg line, 416 413 3959 590 is the text line. Um, it is a 3 nothing win for the Blue Jays. That's good, but we do have to talk about the offense. Nine hits against Houston. That's a franchise low for a three game series. They come into this game. We already said Bo and Vladdy. Um, Frankly, the first four at bats Vladdy had today might be the it might be the worst four at bats. No, it is for me. It, I've seen him have in the Blue Jays. It is for uniform. me. Now the fifth at bat, he battled. On, dude. I, he battled. Yeah, it was an eleven pitch place, at got, bat. Ten oh, pitch at bat. Ninety nine miles an hour. He's right handed. Like you, but give we, him credit for that. But we do have to we do have to point this out, Kevin. Alejandro Kirk did have a three hit day, but my goodness, he chased uh, Vladdy. I. I those two guys in particular, it seemed, not swinging at hittable pitches or missing hittable pitches. Marcus Stroman was fine today, but Marcus Stroman was not over, not dominating and and chasing in a couple of instances. I I, I mean, three nothing's great, but uh, yeah, I think Marcus could be frustrating. Like, like if the timing for for what you're trying to do to the part of the field that you want the ball to end up is not on point with him, he gonna make you look silly. Like a lot of the, look. It's not how hard you throw, it's where you throw it. And when you're throwing them, you know, away and your misses are where Marcus Stroman's misses were, he threw some balls down the middle. I mean, he's a human being. Occasionally he's going to do that. And it's up to good hitters, good lineups to make him pay for that. And, again, it's you can't let the ball away travel. I know everybody says that. You can't. you got to catch that thing at least around the front part of your knee to be able to hit that and, and have it end up where you want it to end up. So they'll take the win. Wasn't pretty, but they'll take it. Welcome to our uh, viewers on Sportsnet. It is Blue Jays Talk with Jeff Blair and Kevin Barker. 
Uh, we'll be doing this a uh, number of times this year following afternoon Jays games. You can send us a text. 59590 is the text number. 416-413-3959. You can leave us a voice note. And if we like it, we'll get it on the air. I got nothing to do with that. You read it and I'll answer it. That's, <laughs> well, that's, that's why we have you here for the eye candy and the, and there the intelligence. You go. It took you uh, long enough to admit that. Yeah, we do. Well, you know, every now and then. <laughs> Joe from London. Why is Ernie Clement not the starting third baseman oh, on the Blue Jays? Uh, he's an above-average fielder, seems to have a good bat, has a great accurate arm, and make him the third baseman and turn IKF into a super utility player because he can play all over the place and really – valuable defensively, but I think the Blue Jays might improve their offense. Appreciate the call, Joe. Look, uh, I mean, I said at the start of the year, I know IKF is here on a multi-year contract, but I don't think he can be this team's everyday third you baseman. You know as well as I do at the beginning of the season, that's why he's playing third. Yeah. It's because they gave him $15 million for two years. That, right. That's why. Now, will this change throughout the season? I'm sure. If IKF doesn't start hitting and earn a commit continues to have quality at bats and, and, you know, shows them that, you know, he can compete and do it against some really good pitching, then he will play a lot more. But that's what it is. Like, I, let's not be naive about this. You gave a guy money, you're going to give him chances to take it and run with it. And, you know, right now, I think the experience and the defense, I'm assuming is what they're sort of banking on with IKF. But offensively, if, if these guys don't start stepping up, it's a lot to ask a pitching staff to try and do this another year in a row. Mm -hmm. Like, sooner or later, they're going to have to start having better at bats. Like, sooner or later, they're going to have to start scoring more runs. Like, they're going to have to do these kind of things if they think they're going to make the playoffs. So, right now, I would think early in the season, it's about money, how much you pay to dude, and about defense. Yeah. They, it, it, let, let's be clear. The, the Jays feel they can carry... IKF's bat if Vladdy and Bo and Springer, I mean, you've heard us talk about this. If Vladdy and Bo and Springer and the guys that are supposed to hit can hit, you can probably carry IKF's bat. He does get exposed every day if nobody else is hitting. Yeah. I, he just does. He is not going to be a guy who is going to save your lineup. He's not going to save a game for you, certainly not at the plate. As for Ernie Clement, my friend Mr. Barker here was the first person I know in these parts to talk about Ernie Clement. About, you know, I saw this guy in the backfield in spring training. Yep. He was taking, taking a bats, and he looked good. And this is, uh, okay, whatever. Ernie <laughs> Clement, career minor leaguer. Uh, he came up last year yeah. and certainly didn't look out of place. He's uh -huh. got, you talked about his swing. His swing is very simple. It's repeatable. Repeatable. Yeah. The perfect guy to have coming off the bench Absolutely. after not playing for two or three days. Yeah. You have to ask yourself, though, much as we saw with Davis Schneider last year, once Davis Schneider started playing every day, the I'm, holes started I'm, to get exposed. I'm not sure bit. Ernie has holes, though. He's got a little short, compact swing, not trying to hit homers. Like, he's not a home run hitter. He's going to hit a home run like he did today on a mistake. Like a guy trying to go away who's left-handed, he misses. You know, it's short and quick. It's simple. It's repeatable. Not trying to do a ton. Catch it out front. That's all you're trying to do is hit it hard. Stay in the big part of the field. Have length to the end of your swing. It's a simple approach. You don't overthink it. I'm just not sure there's a ton of holes. How would you get him out? I mean, I, I guess if you're right-handed, you get him out with sliders down and away. But who can't you get out down and away with a slider? I, I think if he learns how to take those a little bit more and, you know, can maybe drive an occasional double off a slider from a right-handed pitcher to right center, like he's going to get less of those. So, yeah, look, this is about the offensive side. I know early on it's about defense and you're trying to run prevent because, you know, basically one through nine other than Turner – Ain't doing a ton. So, you know, I think they're going to probably try and go mix and match, play the hot hand. Now, <laughs> David Schneider, I, uh, look, I, I I was the one that's yelling and screaming yesterday about why don't you play him because nobody else is hitting homers. He's got eight at bats. He's got two homers. 30 Clement uh, play tomorrow? Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, what is it Chris LaRue, our, our, our uh, radio analyst, called him? Is he the new David Schneider? I would say you could argue. Why wouldn't you? What, but... I mean, well, I would, what's the chances? 
Well, I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm sure there's some there's some khaki going. You know, we didn't plan on this uh, three months before the season. You know, we got this this plotted out, and we're predicting the future here. And and how dare we change it? No, 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 no. No player's going to show us that he can hit, no matter if it's you know the first couple of days of the season or the first month of the season. So I know what I'd do. I'm but stacking you know everybody what? in there that they can hit. You know what? The analytics folks don't like it, oh, though. Bad they don't, like, they don't, like, it. They don't and... like it when human beings perform. Oh. And then you have to change the plans. Oh. You know, you don't really well, you there you. want to be careful. 416-413-3959 is the back leg line. Uh, leave us a voice note. Josh from um, Bowmanville left us a voice note. Nice. Right now, uh, we're going into, I believe, the sixth inning. Vladdy uh, grounded out on the first pitch. It was 1-1 count, grounded out on a third pitch, then saw a third pitch and uh, swung way outside the zone. My question is, is Vladdy impatient at the plate, or is he afraid to fall behind in the counts? I will pass that over to my friend, yeah, Mr. I don't Barker. Yeah, I don't think it's fear. I, I think his... his Impatience? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think it's that. I, I, I think there's a lot of things going on with Vladdy. Like... What that is, I think only Vladdy knows. Like, I, I know he has lots of moving parts. You know, the, a lot of the times the hands are not matching up with the lower half. Like, the, it's rare. Even the pitch that he yelled and screamed at, no, out loud. Did you see where the ball was at when his front foot hit the ground? Like, he had no chance. If he needed to swing at that and foul that off, he had no chance of doing that. And I know the guy throws a bazillion miles an hour, but... Point being is, if I'm athletic enough and on time, most of the time, because I'm very, you know, uh, athletic and can do things with my barrel and my eyes are going to direct that better than most can, I'll have a good chance of having success. It's rare, at least early on here, that he does that. I told you this. When I saw him in spring training, I was standing behind the cage. It was rare that I saw him take a swing. Anytime that I was there, the 15 days or whatever I was there, on the field, off the field, in the cage, that he was trying to force distance. Now, all of a sudden, he goes to Tampa, and they start throwing change-ups from righties, and now you see the two-handed finish. You see him on his heels. You see him over-swinging, which is, you know, we talked to Turner. It's a no-no. Like, you can't do that consistently and be on time and be balanced and have good rotation. And right now, I think bottom line is up to Blatty. The first four at-bats, I agree with the caller. It's the worst four at-bats I've ever seen Blatty take. If I'm Don Mattingly... I know the first person I'm walking up to after the game's over. I'm going to go up to Vladdy and go, if I ever see you have the at-bat in the first inning that I saw you have again, me and you're fighting. We're going in the tunnel and fighting. That's not what we pay you for. Well, we pay you to run, produce, and help this team win a baseball game. You taking an OO sinker and jamming yourself to move a runner After in the first inning. After a leadoff double. I'm sorry. That, that, that's not acceptable, yeah. especially when everybody else is not hitting. I need you to do better. I need you to zone up and have better at-bats. Be a tougher out like the fifth at-bat. Take the fifth at-bat and run it to the first at-bat, yeah. and then you actually give yourself a chance to have success. Can't do that anymore. So you got to be a little tougher on him. I think the conversations have to be a little tougher with Vladdy. Like, nobody argues that he has talent, and it's oozing, but it's the days that look like this are more than they look like he's got oozing talent. Yeah. And I just think they got to clean that up and fix it. And then for me, it's up to Vladdy to do that and then up to a collection of people, his, whoever that right person is, to be tough with him. His first four at-bats, ground out the first, ground out the third, strikeout swinging, strikeout swinging, nine pitches. Now, I know that seeing a ton of, as our friend Josh Donaldson always used to say, not a great at-bat if I saw 12 pitches and the second pitch was the one I should have driven out of the, yeah, out he, of the park. That's what not a great at-bat. He at saw bat, 11 but, pitches in his fifth at-bat yeah. because he missed four or five of them. Correct. That's why he exactly. saw 11 pitches. Yes. Let's be honest. So, yes. yeah, it's it's if you're on time, you have a good idea, you have a, a thought of where you want the barrel to end up before you actually start your swing, It's it is, it is I can understand why fans are very frustrated occasionally watching him hit. And then he laughs about the punch out when Marcus Stroman is Marcus Stroman, right? Yeah. And it's not funny because you look like you looked the, the first two. That was the one where he went way out of the yeah. zone. Yeah. Way out of the zone. Yeah. It's uh, just, it's, it's sometimes it's head scratching. Yeah. Vladdy is, uh, surprise, surprise, Vladdy's very much a talking point, both on the phone line and on the text line. Peter in Calgary left us a text on 59590. And again, that is the text line. Leave us a text. We'll get your text up. We'll talk about it as well. This is uh, from Peter in Calgary. 
And it is about Vladdy. Guys, Vladdy hasn't hit in a year. He is a year. It seems more than that. He is missing mm, everything. He's not strong. going to just snap out of it. What's the answer? Okay, Kevin, uh, uh, thank you for, for the text, Peter. I'm going to ask you that. We've, we've said that. You've talked about Don Mattingly yeah. needs to have a, a talk with him. If you could get Vladdy in a room, yeah. you and Vladdy, yeah. and a cup of coffee, yeah. what are you saying to Vladdy? Be ready to hit the fastball. I, I, I want you to be the best fastball hitter on earth. How do we do that? If we have to eliminate your lower half and stop doing the fruition of his gather, enough of that thing. Like consistently, I I just talked about Ernie Clement being able to do certain things, come off a bench, you know, sit over there for a couple of days and come up and, and hit and look like he looked a couple of days that he hit in a row. Mm -hmm. How do we consistently have a sound mechanical approach to where your swing looks the same all the time? You go, you go and watch the World Series, you watch the playoffs, you watch the great hitters. Their swing, watch Mookie Betts all the time now. He's perfected his lower half to where now all he has to do is have his eyes take the barrel to where the quadrant of the pitch is headed. Until he does that. I just, and I don't understand why, maybe they have. It's like moving around the box. All of a sudden, John told us when he came on our show that they actually do that. That's news to me. I mean, I watch the games pretty close. Doesn't look to me like they're moving around. Sometimes you got to be obvious about things. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got to raise your hand and go, "Hey, look, I'm, I'm moving. moving. I'm moving up." Like to force somebody to to change things. It's just look. He ain't the only one that's not hitting. But man, when you see four at bats that you saw today off a guy that throws most of the time less than ninety miles an hour. Now again, I'm not taking away anything from Strom. He's a smart guy. Like he understands add and subtract. You don't throw hard. You know, make sure your misses are good away off the plate. He understands what a team can't do. He understands where the wind's going. Like, he's a very smart guy. But it's up to you because you have tons of talent to not look like you look the first three at-bats. And that, for me, is the thing. Be the best fastball hitter in baseball. Stop guessing. Stop not being on time. Stop inconsistently being you. And if you can do that because you have tons of talent – we should see the best out of Vladdy. That's what I said. I just don't know if you – do you think they had a hard conversation with him after the game? I, I just don't ever see that happening. I don't, I don't I don't know that if they did or not. Maybe they do. But it just uh, – the reason why I say guessing whether they did or not is because maybe tomorrow we'll see the exact same Vladdy, and that's the frustrating part yeah. of it because he does have lots of talent. Look, he's, he's uh, a free agent after next year, and I've said this a lot. And I know Vladdy's hugely popular with the fan base uh, for a variety of reasons. But I don't know what he is. Two years away from free agency. Oh, I mean, is he's he... a 25 and 90 guy. I mean, yeah. I, I don't, I don't no. agree with the, with the is he, is... Texas first line there where he didn't hit in a year. Yeah, he hit last year. I mean, he led the team in, in homers and RBIs. It's Not just what, what we expect. It's just what, what do you, what's the expectation? You give if, him... he, if he hits 30 and drives in 100, that's a good year for do Vladdy? You give him, I think when you, you need to look at, who people lump him in with. This is the guy that was lumped in when he came up with Fernando Tatis Jr., yeah. Juan Soto. Jordan Alvarez. Jordan Alvarez. Yeah. He, was, he was lumped uh, in with, with hey, he finished second in MVP voting one year, I do believe. He was lumped in with all those guys. Mm -hmm. And when you do that early in your career, 25 and 90 is not good enough. Twi or let me rephrase that. 25 and 90 doesn't allow you to meet the expectations people have for you. Yeah, that's fair. I, we'll see. We'll see. I just don't know. I, the expectations are so high with him. What's a good year? You know, I got... <laughs> if, he, if he hits 30 and drives in 100, that's a good year? Yeah. It's the, a good... That's, the, that, you know, that's four more homers and six more RBIs than he had last year. It's a yeah. good year? Just because it's around... There's around numbers? Does that... Well... Because the, the but again, MVP, does that, the, does that the, but Kevin... The finish in second does, was 40 and 114 does, or whatever that put it was. him at a level where he is among the 20 best players in the game last day. Uh, that's a where good question. Where he deserves to be among the highest paid players. We, we were talking at one point about a guy. I mean, I remember the story when Tatis Jr. signed. What impact is this going to have on Vladdy's contract? Now, oh my God, everybody's going to get $400 million over, a long -term, uh, over the life of a long-term contract. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know anymore. I, I, I do know that it never ceases to amaze me that a guy who came up and all we said was, oh, this dude can fall out of bed and hit. But, man, I don't know yeah, if they're I ever going to. 
I don't know if they're ever going to find a position for him. I was one of those. I'm happier with Vladdy defensively at first base than I am. Mm, that's and fine. I know that's, but I'm talking to a former first baseman and you see it differently than I do. I admit that, but I'm saying I ha I'm happier with him defensively than I am with him offensively right now. Just them. And I kind of felt that way last year as well. 416-413-3959, mm. the back leg line. Leave us a voice note. Lindsay in Winnipeg did just that. Really enjoyed his mix of pitches and his use of the curveball and how he uh, kept the uh, batters off balance. I just wanted to know your thoughts about today's pitching performance by Issei Kikuchi, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thanks Thank very you. much. Appreciate that. Lizzie. Kevin, I'll turn it over to you. 719 first pitch strikes. He, you know, hey, he, he kept the Yankees scoreless. Still throws too many pitches for my life. Yeah, look, I, I think it's a lot of his is glove hand and trunk rotation. Uh, it's which one goes first sometimes, which one's not on point some of the times. That's why you see a lot of non-competitive uh, arm side run right right out of the hand. It's a it's a ball. That's why you see the pitch counts go up way up. That's why you saw today, even today, sometimes the the, the midsection goes before the glove goes, and the ball sort of all over the place. The breaking ball's not you know ending up where he wants it to end up. So it is a work in progress. But you got to give him credit. Uh, a year and a half ago, there's no way he could have got through a game like this in Yankee Stadium and actually no. give them a chance to win. He has he, he pitches, can go to things. He pitches well at Yankee Stadium. Do you have any idea why? I, uh, I think they're an older team who don't like velocity. Okay. I, I, I do think that, and and sometimes they are guessers and they're cheaters at the plate. Right? They gotta they gotta cheat to get the head out. And when you do that, you can throw a bad curveball, you can throw a bad slider, you can get away with it. And there's not too many lefties though. Ninety six. I mean, he was consistently. Sitting at that number, that allows him to expand those secondary pitches and get away with a stinker. And when you do that, again, the pitch count's going to go way up. It's not where they want it to be. The the strike ones are not where they want it to be. You know, league average is somewhere right at the 60% mark. He wasn't 40% today. Like, that's got to get better. Like, he's going to run into better lineups. Mm -hmm. Who he's going to have to get ahead That's uh, a great point. Uh, the, the Yankees lineup for, you know, for their 6-1 and one record – there's some, if you just listen to what people are saying well, in, in New York, I mean, there's there's some issues with that line. Yeah, I saw, I saw some, some issues with I that saw lineup. a stat today. Yankees have the fourth lowest exit velocity in the American League at 87.7 coming into today. Who's lower than them? Uh, well, the Blue Jays are second worst. Um, you know, behind only the, you know, the right. maybe the worst team that's ever been Put the big least, no, the, the A's. Now, Colorado's uh, worse than Oakland. Oh, it's, I mean, potato, potato. Here. Uh, <laughs> the Toronto Blue Jays beat the New York Yankees 3 0 in the first game of a three game series in the Bronx. Ernie Clement, a pinch hit home run. The Yankees bullpen. John Birdie having one of those openers that makes you wonder if he'll ever recover from it. And you know what it's Yankees 99. fans are like? You know what Yankees fans are like? Uh, three wild pitches, two walks, help the Jays to their win. We're going to take a break and come back with more. It's Blue Jays Talk on the Sportsnet Radio Network and Sportsnet. Timber Mart is Canada's building center, a solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of air miles, reward miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. It's sports streaming season. This spring, get set for nonstop action on Sportsnet Plus. Unbelievable. Every electrifying game of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Did you see that? All the knockout moments in UFC. Awe-inspiring action from the NBA playoffs. Plus, the Toronto Blue Jays are back in full swing. We got it! Catch all the can't-miss moments that matter most to you. Because when it happens in sports, it happens on Sportsnet Plus. Subscribe at sportsnetplus.ca. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. 
No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order Pizza Pizza. That's CA. We're two men in a truck. The movers who care. You never know when cardiac arrest can happen. That's why each and every one of our trucks carries a life-saving Mikey defibrillator as part of our Mikey on Board program. Whether we're on the highway or in front of your house, we're prepared to help anyone whose heart may skip a beat. The Mikey Network has saved many lives, making Mikeys accessible to the public. And now they're on board our trucks. We're two men in a truck. Two men and a truck, the movers who care. The Blue Jays are inviting you to work from dome. Put it in your calendar. 307 Weekday starts this season. You can work from dome with friends or coworkers at Rogers Center. It's a game changer. Make the ballpark your office for the afternoon. Work from dome. 307 Weekday starts. Let's touch base. Check out ticket options on bluejays.com slash work from dome. Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready-to-order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Centre. Visit TimberMart.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Swing and a miss, strike three. He keeps this game tied on Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. What you like about it, you know, handedness for sure. You know, we're a little bit kind of tight, you know, with our bench today. So, you know, wanted to kind of, you know, get that match up there to lead the inning off. Um, but I think with Ernie, you know, it's such a simple swing and so contact oriented. That's why he's so good off the bench. Um, but doing damage too when he's ahead in the count. You know, he's been doing that for a while, the last year or so. Um, huge, huge at bat from him. Um, just brings instant energy and uh, turning point of the game for sure. You know, uh, there was an earthquake in New York City or earlier today it mm. measured 4.8 in the uh, the Richter scale. I mean, it didn't really do much to wake up the bats of these two teams. I, yeah. I'm sorry. I Must was trying to figure out it. Well, I wanted to work the earthquake in. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, you could have just said there was an earthquake. What? You could have just said there's an earthquake. There was an earthquake in Yeah, well, anyway, I know, but that's true. Uh, <laughs> but as you just heard John Schneider, the manager of the Toronto Blue Jays, say it was Ernie Clement's pinch hit home run that... Uh, Put some wind in the sails of the Blue Jays. They went on to win 3 nothing over the New York Yankees. Well, I mean, Blue Jays talked with day. Jeff Blair and Kevin Barker. It is opening day in Yankee Stadium on the road. I mean, if that if that's not enough right there to get you fired up, what I makes, guess. I mean, I guess it took to the seventh inning. What makes a guy, uh, John Schneider's comment was interesting. What, what makes him a good hitter? I guess hitters are better hitters when they're ahead in the count anyhow. But the way John mentioned that, what is it about Ernie Clement do you think that that – yeah, I think you got to have a decent plan of what you're trying to do, right? If I'm trying to, to, you know, make solid contact on the baseball, I'm probably not looking at least early in the count something middle away. I want to get something middle or middle in because I'm short and quick to the ball and not really overthinking that and don't have a ton of big moves, right? He's not a collision guy. Collision guy is like a turner where it kicks the leg and everything follows and I'm trying to maximize when the ball leaves the barrel. He ain't that guy. Like, he wants to hit the ball hard to quadrants and the way he does that is just be short and quick and then the barrel's the last thing you see and... Yeah, but you got to swing at the right pitch, and I think that's where you start. And just seems like he's sort of – everything's come together here. He's taking it and run with it, and it's moments not too big for you. Hitting in Yankee Stadium the seventh thing is not the easiest thing to do, especially in a tie game. And you're you're being sent to the plate to do something good. Mm-hmm. And it's not the easiest thing to do that, and give him credit, he did it. 416-413-3959. That is the back leg line. We are going to be doing Blue Jays talk live after – a number of afternoon games this year on Sportsnet. That is the number to call and leave a comment. We will get your comment on the air. 590-590 is a text line. You want to text us during the game, right after the game, respond to something we said, respond to something you see. Please feel free to do it, and uh, we will get your texts up there. Noah in Newmarket sent in a text about the starting pitching. And uh, ask this question. When the pitching staff regresses to the mean, Will the offense be able to bridge that gap? I'm not so hopeful. If we fall too far down the rankings here, I feel like we would be wide to trade assets in an attempt to rebuild our farm system. Good thought, Noah. Thank you for that. Um, I don't know about regressing to me to the mean, but Kevin and I have talked about this a lot. 
the Blue Jays pitching staff was unusually healthy last year. Like that was a mm-hmm. that was a year blessed by the baseball gods. Yeah. For for starting pitching Absolutely. for this team. Four guys made 30 starts. Yeah. This year we've already seen Alec Manoa. Uh he's behind. He's still he's still down in Florida. Kevin Gossman is still building up. Gossman, Bassett, they're not young anymore. You know, you I mean you just got to you've got to be aware of those things the Jays have in Ricky Tiedemann, a top one of the game's top pitching prospects. Mm-hmm. General consensus is he's one of the game's top pitching prospects. So there's a little bit of hope there, but you know, you trading Bo Bichette? The, the text, no, that's the but, well, that's but, the only well, guy. No, no, really? no. Well, this is the thing, and but the, Noah brought up a really good point because. With Bo and Vladdy eligible for free agency after next season, like this is, this is kind of an inflection point for this organization. Uh, there are some awfully tough decis- decisions that are going to have to be made, and we talked about it a little bit on on Blair and Barker yesterday. We talked about you know Juan Soto's with the Yankees because the Yankees had enough in their minor league system, and they had a little bit Michael King at the major league level. Mm-hmm. To put together a trade for Juan Soto. Yeah. Um, the Jays do not have enough high end minor league depth to put together a deal for an impactful player. They just don't. I don't even know, frankly, if I don't need you know, Ricky, Ricky Tiedemann and Aurelvis Martinez are their top two prospects. I don't know if either of them gets you. I don't know if either of them necessarily gets you what you need to kind of build your next window. Because what we're talking about is building towards the next window mm-hmm. of opportunity. So that comes down to, okay, who are you going to trade off your major league roster? And this is why I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Noah's, Noah's text. I've already said, Bassett's old. You know, uh, Kevin Gossman, he's getting up there. They've pitched a ton of innings. Mm-hmm. You might be able to get something for Jose Barrios. He's but predictable. You know, He's predictable, yeah. but I don't think, given the age of the other dudes, given the uncertainty with Alec Manoa, given the fact that Ricky Tiedemann hasn't pitched what in the major would Barrios give you or get you? I'm saying I think he's more – Jose Barrios, to me, is more valuable to the Blue Jays than he is to any other team. I would think so. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, regardless of what happens over the life of that contract, I don't think he's going to be any worse than your number three starter. I don't think so. Either. So, you ask yourself, who are you moving? George Springer? Nobody's taking George Springer. Uh, Dalton Varsho? Maybe you call up the Diamondbacks and see if they'll trade. No, I won't, I won't go there. Uh, Bo and Vladdy. I think at some point in the offseason, if we don't have any, anything to talk about in the postseason this year, I think at some point we have to have that discussion about what do you do? Do you ride out Bo and Vladdy for the next year? Do you try to sign one of them? Yeah, you know, I think the question, too, is how— And I, if you don't, what are you going to try to get What do you think them? this lineup could turn into? That, that, and I just don't. I don't think anybody has the answer to that. I, I don't think the Blue Jays do. I, I know they they're trying to predict the future and tell us that you know everybody's going to come up and and be what they think they're going to be. But anything, any signs directing that direction for you? I like. I I just don't. Again, I I, I think it's a you have a good week would change people's minds. Nah, I don't. You see, I but I, I I'm going to disagree with that. I don't. I don't think. You I mean you're talking about Vladdy. I'm talking about the lineup oh, as a whole. Lineup. I'm okay, talking about okay. you have quality at bat. Yes, yes. Like you have a, a whole week's worth of that last at bat Vladdy just had. Or you're going to be tough out. Like you have, you continue to have at bats like that. Now, again, he missed pitches. He should have hammered. Dude's throwing a bazillion miles an hour. Ball moving all over the place. Not the easy if it. Well, easy obviously, bats. Asco, his catcher couldn't. But his he, catcher couldn't catch but it. But at so least obviously it was a was fight. Really, you have yeah. nine dudes doing that. Like yeah. things would turn around. Do you think they could do that for a week or two straight? That's the thing you got to ask yourself. They're telling us they can't, and I, I, I just don't know if anybody else has the answer for that other than the the organization, the Blue Jays. Let's go to uh, Keith from Barrie, Ontario. Love Barrie, Ontario. Kevin, just curious on your thoughts of them pulling um, Kirky uh, at the end there when he got uh, to second. Um, I was listening to Joe Siddle, and he was uh, not not thrilled with that um, move. But I, I, you know what? I liked it. Uh, I think Severin's earned his uh, spot on the on the team, especially with. Uh, Jano being out, but I'd like to hear what you have to say about it, Kevin. Thanks a lot. Love the show. 
Yeah, you'll notice he doesn't really give a rat's ass about what I said. Yeah, it, the, what, they were up, they were at one. Not nothing. that that bothers me. They were at one nothing, right? When he when he I'm was pinch ran for for they had the lead already. Uh, they like serving behind the dish. Like they don't think they'll miss a beat with him behind the dish. And well, they the, don't uh, score a run if, and, if Kirk's on if Kirk's on the base pass. It, I think Joe is talking more about the the game planning and getting a pitcher through a tough spot. Right, the ninth inning's a tough spot. You'd rather have the lead, have your starting catcher behind the dish. I'm assuming that's what Joe is talking about. Me, Kirk, he's the slowest dude on earth. Occasionally, you got to be able to take the base when you got to be able to take the base. Like you got, you got to set a little something here early in the season that says we're going to do it the right way. We're going to be a tough out. You're going to beat us. You're going to beat us because we're not beating ourselves. And I think that comes with you know you get a small lead at second, you get a big secondary lead because the guy throws the ball away. You take third, and, I, and you can do the same thing at home, and you still run that way to make it easier for the guy coming in. Me, I think it made a hundred percent. The right move. Yeah, I make total sense. I will say this: the only question I had is why you waited until you until he got to second base because Kirk uh, it's, lem, lem, because Kirk at first base. That's a you know that he is the human double play. I mean, it's just sitting right there. It's part of the order, but not in scoring position. That's those what I was. I, I think that shows that shows that John Schneider's thought process was: if I take Alejandro Kirk out for Brian Servan, I am sacrificing a bit of you know I'm the defense the the. I mean, the stuff that makes the, – the reason you like Kirk behind the plate. So I think John's thought process was, I'm not going to do that when he's at first base. Yeah. If he gets into scoring position and he becomes a run – because let's face it, Alejandro Kirk isn't a run at first base. Alejandro Kirk, to me, is a run when he gets to second I, base. And I think that was John's And I do process. know Kevin Gosman in spring training was asked about just game calling, setting up for serving behind the dish. How did he like that? You know, receiving the baseball. He says he's a big fan of it. Like, they weren't missing the beat. They weren't having to think their way through it. They weren't, you know, wouldn't giving, like, the mouth signals to move over. I don't really want it there because you don't know what you're doing behind the dish. I think sometimes you just can't overthink it. Things are right in front of you. You know, do what you're supposed to do, and that's one of those moves where you got to get add-on runs. Add-on runs are huge. Buck Martinez talks about this all the time. Kirk, you can't go third on a pass ball. Serving can. It made for me the right. It was the right move. Uh, let's post the uh, text from Jason and Worthington, only because it's a good question, though. Jason and Worthington said, kind of seems to be the same frame of mind as myself. Blair said, "At five and five, sounds good right about now. Five and five road trip after what you saw in Houston." You're happy with that if the no, Jays come no, home? No, I'm not happy with that. I told you six and four. Damn. And the reason why I told you six and four is what we've been talking about since June of last year is the offense. And all they've been yelling and screaming about is the core and the new team-wide approach. You know, let's see it right in front of us against some good teams on the road. Have we seen it? Five and five tells you nothing. Five and five tells you the same thing you knew from June on, that your pitching's really good. And it's going to keep you in most games. Other than that, do you know anything else? Yeah, do you have any hope when they come home offensively they're going to be better? Uh, was the ball still carried right the, center or doesn't the, it carry? The Seattle, like, Mar the Seattle Mariners are running out. So yeah, the, you know, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but but the fact of the matter is the three pitchers the Jays are going to face when Seattle comes to town are going to be the three best starters they face. No this hit, year, with one the hit. exception of Framber Valdez. No hit and one hit. You're probably fortunate being five and five. Uh, how's, I'll say it that way. How's that? I think it's okay. But uh, are you happy? Are you, do you feel any more confident about this team? Oh, no. Five and five. Oh, five. Six, and, six and four, you'd have been a little bit more confident. Things offensively probably would have been, you know, you would have seen some people turn in the corner. You seen any of that? Five and f No. Yeah. Just that one win and that one less loss that would make you feel a little bit better about I, the I offense. Would have, I would have been okay we five and five with a, little more off, with, with, with a little more offense. That I mean, is true. if they're five and five with who's not here on the pitching side, that just tells you what they're doing off the field with the pitching. Huh. Self-correcting and making in-game adjustments, boy, they know how to do it. Huh. That's all. That's all I'm saying is that side of the ball has been taken care of. That's why I said six and four make you feel a little bit better about the offensive side. Five and five, now for me, does nothing. Tells me nothing. Tells you nothing. I mean, you're gonna gloat because you guessed five and five. Because well, I said six gloat. and four, and it makes our show better. And it gets people texting in saying Blair's right, five and five. That's you know what I say every now and then. Every now and then. <laughs> uh, you, every now and then. You say the opposite of what I say. It That's makes right. a show That's better. That's how it works. <laughs> three nothing. The Blue Jays have beaten the New York Yankees in the first of a three game series in the Bronx. 
They'll play again Saturday and Sunday. Of course, all those games on the Sportsnet radio network and on the TV side on Sportsnet. Monday, the Jays return home to the refurbished Rogers Center. They will take on the Seattle Mariners. And a reminder, Blair and Barker can be heard and seen from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on Sportsnet 590, the fan in Sportsnet. So have yourself a great weekend. Thank you for listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by the local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center. Rust Control Centers in Mount Pearl and Corner Brook, Newfoundland. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Find your local family-owned Crown at crown.com, Canada's number one rust protection. has been Major League Baseball play-by-play on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. Why do I love calling this game? Calling this game? Calling this game? Calling this game? Why do I love calling this game? It's because I get a chance to bring some joy into people's lives. Anything can happen on a baseball field. We've got a new game. It's perfectly unscripted theater. Everybody on their feet. Because you never know what you're going to see on a given day. It is Bethlehem at the bank as Bryce Harper something about baseball on the radio. Something about the way wood hits leather. A swing and a drive to deep left center. The way leather hits dirt. And he make a play. Oh, my. The way a deep fly ball sounds like it's about to change history. High fly ball to center field. It's hit pretty well toward the wall. Until the cleats hit the grass, hit the crushed brick, and then nothing but sky in a silent crowd. Until leather hits leather and 40,000 fans lose their collective minds in a perfect symphony of chaos. He jumped up on top of the wall, balanced himself, and caught it! The way nothing triumphs a perfectly honest call. I don't believe what I just saw. And the way the right voice can make a moment live forever. Touch them all, Joe! You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life! Outsiders may think this is just two teams. The ball, a bat, and a microphone, but no. For over a hundred years, this has been the soundtrack of the American pastime. He struck it out looking. It's over. It's over. The Rangers have won the World Series. The soundtrack of summer. This is Major League Baseball on the radio. Right now on Sirius XM. All rise. Coming in five. Get ready to play. Four. Get up. Three. Can you believe it? Put your seatbelt on. Wow. Talk about the game and all the stories on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM 89, and the Sirius XM app. 61, Orioles on internet, 842. 4.35 p.m., San Francisco Giants take on the San Diego Padres. Giants on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 863. Padres on Internet 862. 6.40 p.m., Cincinnati Reds take on the New York Mets. Reds on Sirius 138, XM 175, and Internet 846. Mets on Internet 857. 6.45 p.m., Washington Nationals take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Nationals on Sirius 208, XM 176, and Internet 869. Phillies on Internet 860. 7.20 p.m. Atlanta Braves take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Braves on Sirius 209, XM 177, and Internet 841. Diamondbacks on Internet 840. 7.40 p.m. Kansas City Royals take on the Chicago Cubs. Royals on Sirius 210, XM 181, and Internet 851. White Sox on Internet 845. 8.05 p.m. Texas Rangers take on the Houston Astros. Rangers on Sirius 85, XM 182, and Internet 867. Astros on Internet 850. Spanish broadcast on Sirius 132, XM 183, and Internet 871. Sirius XM has soccer covered end to end. Sirius XM FC. Hear live play-by-play and talk shows hosted by legends of the game. It's Sirius XM FC on Channel 157. Super agent Scott Boris speaks on the roller coaster offseason that he had and his clients experienced in 2024 when he was on MLB Network Radio. That uh, The process was one where with a Bellinger and a Snell that the teams were certainly... Um, interested in them at levels uh, based upon their platform, but they also had strong considerations about their previous performance that registered concern for them with uh, with length. And so, the, and we of course anticipated this that we would have options which would be appropriate AAVs for the players on a shorter term or lower AVs uh, when it came to long-term, you know, progressions by team. So I I think the 
aspect of what Montgomery was in this market was he was the player that had three quality years. He finished really strong. And what we see in this was probably, in my mind, going to be what I would consider the mistake uh, that a number of teams are going to regret as they go back and look at their off-season conduct because of the fact that uh, you know, Monty's a postseason pitcher. He's a guy that has all the characteristics uh, that you would normally covet in, uh, in free agency. Follow every second of the action on NHL Network Radio. From behind the bench to every play on the ice. If it's hockey, it's on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Friday, April the 5th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.05 p.m., New York Yankees take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Yankees on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 858. Blue Jays on Internet 868. 1.10 1.10 p.m., Detroit Tigers take on the Oakland A's. Tigers on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 849. Athletics on Internet 859. 2.20 p.m., Chicago Cubs take on the LA Dodgers. Cubs on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 844. Dodgers on Internet 853. Spanish broadcast on Internet 870. 4.10 p.m., Colorado Rockies take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Rockies on Sirius 211, XM 178, and Internet 848. Rays on Internet 866. 4.12 p.m., Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Baltimore Orioles. Pirates on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 861. Orioles on Internet 842. 4.35 p.m., San Francisco Giants take on the San Diego Padres. Giants on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 863. Padres on Internet 862. 6.40 p.m., Cincinnati Reds take on the New York Mets. Reds on Sirius 138, XM 175, and Internet 846. Mets on Internet 857. 6.45 p.m., Washington Nationals take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Nationals on Sirius 208, XM 176, and Internet 869. Phillies on Internet 860. 7.20 p.m. Atlanta Braves take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Braves on Sirius 209, XM 177, and Internet 841. Diamondbacks on Internet 840. 7.40 p.m. Kansas City Royals take on the Chicago Cubs. Royals on Sirius 210, XM 181, and Internet 851. White Sox on Internet 845. 8.05 p.m. Texas Rangers take on the Houston Astros. Rangers on Sirius 85, XM 182, and Internet 867. Astros on Internet 850. Spanish broadcast on Sirius 132, XM 183, and Internet 871. 8.10 p.m. Milwaukee Brewers take on the Seattle Mariners. Brewers on Sirius 121, XM 184, and Internet 855. Mariners on Internet 864. 9.30 p.m. LA Angels take on the Boston Red Sox. Angels on Sirius and XM Channels 89, Internet 852. Red Sox on Internet 843. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Friday, April the 5th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.05 p.m., New York Yankees take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Yankees on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 858. Blue Jays on Internet 868. 1.10 1.10 p.m., Detroit Tigers take on the Oakland A's. Tigers on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 849. Athletics on Internet 859. 2.20 p.m., Chicago Cubs take on the LA Dodgers. Cubs on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 844. Dodgers on Internet 853. Spanish broadcast on Internet 870. 4.10 p.m., Colorado Rockies take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Rockies on Sirius 211, XM 178, and Internet 848. Rays on Internet 866. 4.12 p.m., Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Baltimore Orioles. Pirates on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 861. Orioles on Internet 842. 4.35 p.m., San Francisco Giants take on the San Diego Padres. Giants on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 863. Padres on Internet 862. 6.40 p.m., Cincinnati Reds take on the New York Mets. Reds on Sirius 138, XM 175, and Internet 846. Mets on Internet 857. 6.45 p.m., Washington Nationals take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Nationals on Sirius 208, XM 176, and Internet 869. Phillies on Internet 860. 7.20 p.m. Atlanta Braves take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Braves on Sirius 209, XM 177, and Internet 841. Diamondbacks on Internet 840. 7.40 p.m. Kansas City Royals take on the Chicago Cubs. Royals on Sirius 210, XM 181, and Internet 851. 
White Sox on the internet, 8.45. 8.05 p.m., Texas Rangers take on the Houston Astros. Rangers on Sirius 85, XM 182 and internet, 8.67. Astros on internet, 8.50. Spanish broadcast on Sirius 132, XM 183 and internet, 8.71. Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio is the place for expert advice, strategy, and information from the best fantasy sports analysis to win your league. Plus, hear pick-by-pick coverage of live drafts and interviews with top players, coaches, and team executives on Sirius XM 87. Detroit Tigers manager A.J. Hinch was on MLB Network Radio and talked about the Tigers' bullpen. I mean, everybody has a role and a an idea on what part of the lineup they're going to face, or it's pretty obvious, like, you know, especially with the balance that we have. We have three lefties and five righties in our pen, and so I can really mix and match and do whatever. We need them to be confident enough and good enough to pitch in, in any point of the game because of the importance of an out that we might need. So... The first game of the year was was a great indication of that. I went to Shelby Miller in the seventh. We went to Chapin in the eighth. And then he rolled around and got the first out of the ninth. But then Jason Foley came in going 101 mile an hour bowling ball. So <laughs> that that played out that way. I'm like, I kind of like that combo. Um, yesterday, right. Foley went before Miller. You know, Foley no. went before right. Miller. In the ninth inning, it was more important that, that Jason got a clean inning. Shelby inherited a runner at second in the 10th inning. I like the swing and miss. I like the variety of pop-ups. Um, and then Alex Lang's going to factor in as well. So we have a, a deep pen. I, my behavior will dictate the roles more than my words will. I just i am careful with the media to not say, hey, this yeah. is my guy here. And then all of a sudden, you know, we roll into a place and they've got seven left-handed hitters. I mean, why would I not use Chapin and Holton? you know, right, as, right. as leverage relievers against those guys. So the players are bought in. They all want to pitch, and they all want to pitch the ninth inning. Get the latest news, opinion, and analysis from MMA to boxing and the professional wrestling world 24-7. Sirius XM Fight Nation. Sirius XM 156. And the SXM app. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Friday, April the 5th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 1.05 p.m., New York Yankees take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Yankees on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 858. Blue Jays on Internet 868. 1.10 p.m., Detroit Tigers take on the Oakland A's. Tigers on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 849. Athletics on Internet 859. 2.20 2.20 p.m., Chicago Cubs take on the LA Dodgers. Cubs on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 844. Dodgers on Internet 853. Spanish broadcast on Internet 870. 4.10 p.m., Colorado Rockies take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Rockies on Sirius 211, XM 178, and Internet 848. Rays on Internet 866. 4.12 p.m., Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Baltimore Orioles. Pirates on Sirius 106, XM 179, and Internet 861. Orioles on Internet 842. 4.35 p.m., San Francisco Giants take on the San Diego Padres. Giants on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 863. Padres on Internet 862. 6.40 p.m., Cincinnati Reds take on the New York Mets. Reds on Sirius 138, XM 175, and Internet 846. Mets on Internet 857. 6.45 p.m., Washington Nationals take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Nationals on Sirius 208, XM 176, and Internet 869. Phillies on Internet 860. 7.20 p.m. Atlanta Braves take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Braves on Sirius 209, XM 177, and Internet 841. Diamondbacks on Internet 840. 7.40 p.m. Kansas City Royals take on the Chicago Cubs. Royals on Sirius 210, XM 181, and Internet 851. White Sox on Internet 845. 8.05 p.m. Texas Rangers take on the Houston Astros. Rangers on Sirius 85, XM 182, and Internet 867. Astros on Internet 850. Spanish broadcast on Sirius 132, XM 183, and Internet 871. 8.10 p.m. Milwaukee Brewers take on the Seattle Mariners. Brewers on Sirius 121, XM 184, and Internet 855. Mariners on Internet 864. 9.30 p.m. LA Angels take on the Boston Red Sox. Angels on Sirius and XM Channels 89, Internet 852. Red Sox on Internet 843. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Friday, April the 5th. All times are Eastern and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 105 p.m. New York Yankees take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Yankees on Sirius 208, XM 175,